Hey there, hi there, everybody. Hello, hello. How are you all doing on this lovely day? How's it going, Rob Zor, Alicia, Cry of the Wind, Anna's Mana? How's it going, Fornin? Old Testament's Big Bad. Pretty much. Gets, gets referenced and uh, hinted at often enough that I always found it pretty cool. Some delightful cursed to golf jams to warm us up today during the stream pre-roll. What a game that was. So many delightful uh, little indie games that are ex exist on Steam. I know just from uh, the existence of a few other channels, like SD89, that there are more games out there than I could possibly hope to play in a lifetime. Even if I played a new one or several new ones every single day, I wouldn't see all the cool games that are out there. It has no right to have such a banging soundtrack. It, it's so cool to see all the, the pixel art and neat stuff. That's uh, kind of splash the artistic landscape of indie games. Speaking of, we'll actually be trying a, a new pixel art uh, centric title by the name of Elderond next week. I've just been reached out to for an opportunity uh, to sponsor that game. And I, I thought that the demo looked delightfully wonderful uh, with some some really wonderful pixel animations as well as the sort of exploring and loot collecting that makes my head tingle. So quite excited to take a look at that next week. Let's get Spire booted up here. Get our usual background track going before I address a few other things. Cry of the wind, if you tell falsehoods to Twitch chat, would that be a lie of the wind? Thanks for those 10k points. How you doing tonight? Today. This eve. Morn. Or whatever time it might be for you. I don't know if that we had that many uh, relics get mastered yesterday. But we did definitely have a few cards get mastered that we were uh, tracking, keeping it our eye on. Uh, especially some silent rares that caught me off guard. Let me take a look at the run history here as we get started. Hexit, thank you so much for the Prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Welcome. Vertex Shell, thanks for seven months of support. Very Dead Cell-ish. It definitely reminded me of Dead Cells initially, that's for sure. There we are. Visually speaking... But definitely with its own uh, own style. Definitely didn't feel like Dead Cells mechanically, at least the, the few minutes that I was able to play. Yeah, rare to see a Watcher loss. I think we're going to see a lot more in the quest to master all the cards of Slay the Spire. We definitely got out of control on this one. I should have kept it at simply trying to win with two copies of Prey. That alone is difficult enough. But we ended up adding... Probably way too many cards to this deck, uh, including Double Trip, which I think was part of our uh, part of our loss contributing factor, and just couldn't cut it against the end game bosses. Despite the kunai, Silent, however, with a kunai was able to do really incredible things, and we had double Alchemize, double Doppelganger, double Accuracy, double Terror. Double Cloak and Dagger, Double Poison Stab. Heck yeah. Ironclad was able to get Double Corruption and Double Immolate. 
as well as... Not sure anything else was important here. And on defect, we had double echo form, triple meteor strike, as well as double sweeping beam, and perhaps most importantly of all, double magnetism, which we didn't get a whole lot of use out of, but uh, did have successfully for, for doing the shenanigans with. Waffles still not mastered. Interesting. Very interesting. Did double corruption help in any way? Yes. Yes, it, it allowed us to more consistently draw and play a corruption early in, in each combat, which was, was actually quite important because this deck only had a base of three energy per turn. So being able to make sure all the skills were free and then drawing us cards off the doubled Arc Embrace was quite important. Really nice to sort of have that insurance against a bottom draw. That's why I like having duplicate of important powers, especially going into heart. Waffle is cursed confirmed. Will this be a waffle run? Only one way to find out. I'll catch up with a couple of subs, by the way. Hexit, thanks for the prime sub. Hexit, said, Hexit says, had to drop by and drop a sub. I was stuck four or five ascensions below the rest with Watcher, but have improved greatly thanks to the vids. Heck yeah. How's it going, Cry of the Wind? I will give another shout out to the Discord and the specifically Discourse channel in the Discord. Uh, if you're looking for ways to help the relief efforts in Turkey after the recent tragedy there, uh, we do have a, a link for, uh, for providing support. Mr. Bruno says, can a seated run be used to get an ascension level? I do not believe so. I don't think you can get achievements or ascension levels by using a seed or by using custom mode. Vernick Shell, thanks for seven months. Sulfur, thanks for 29 mo months. And Toaster X42, thanks for two months as well. Hmm. I am a sucker for 250 gold starts, and wow, there are shops galore here. I'm also thinking we should do boss swap on Ironclad a bit more often. How's it going, 039? There will definitely be some more slice and dice in our future. I was tempted to play today. Maybe we will. The kind of announced monster train. At minimum, we'll play it by tomorrow. Definitely want to get back to that game. Such a delight. Good to see uh, Sneaky Teak's been playing it, too. Give a shout out to Sneaky Teak. Currently playing Slice and Dice. And a delightful, oh, wonderful, wonderful guy. Very, very friendly, welcoming community. Took 10 tries for hard. I can believe it. I can definitely believe it. We breezed through that first run with uh, with an overpowered combo. But like I said, if I, if I go back to hard and play it, I, I expect that I'll lose. At least some of the time. What game is... Did I mention that Jorbs was getting back into? Jorbs started a new save file in Monster Train. And he's been playing a ton of Monster Train. So I've been, it's been very cool to see uh, that game getting a little bit more presence on Twitch. Speaking of, this is one of the runs pro that uh, is progressing towards our Monster Train inspired Slay the Spire Mastery Challenge, where we have to defeat the heart in Slay the Spire with essentially every different card in the game. 
We're tracking which cards we've accomplished this with using a spreadsheet linked there in Twitch chat. But the point is to force me to use all of the different cards in the game, even the underutilized, underpowered ones. Uh, in my opinion, I had to make it in duplicate just to make it more interesting. Otherwise, it would be too easy to just grab one copy of a card, not play it, and call it a day. But I decided it has to be two copies. That way I'm reasonably forced to actually use the card to do something uh, if I want to be able to win. And it makes the curses super spicy. Third option month. I could get behind that. Third option, taking the downside is... Sometimes it's okay, but oof, it can go bad for you. I really do like 250 gold starts. I feel like they're some of the most diverse starts in the whole game. Plus, how do you master a curse if you don't at least start with one? is a completely bad draw, even without the presence of injury. Just us bricking against cultists. We're definitely going to have to skip a defend here. Don't make no illusions that you can play strike, strike, defend, or bash, defend on this turn. It has to be bash, strike, for sure. And unfortunately, we're one off from killing with three strikes now. Uh, and we'll still be off from killing with either three strikes or with bash, strike, unless I play an additional strike here. So we'd better take another hit. Okay, we caught up in damage and we win. Not the greatest start, but we get 20 gold, very nice. And we're offered a perfected strike, which is definitely reasonable considering that I have a different card to remove already. Have we done a perfected strike run yet? This year? Hmm. The bot knows. No, we have not done a Perfected Strike deck this year. Let's do it. So I'd like to go to this store, giving us the potential to go to two shops. I also don't really want another floor with a curse. And I kind of have an idea of what I'm doing. Also, there's a four elite path. I did not notice this at first. Juicy. Well, that's actually more reason to only go to one shop. One, two, three, font combats. No, let's go to two shops. <laughs> Abacus Shrug It Off is here. Hand of Greed is here. Hand of Greed this early can be very nice. Is our boss? We're fighting Slime Boss. It can be really, really nice. We're not. We're fighting Hexaghost. Hmm. <laughs> Interesting. The Hand of Greed. There's a fun little mini deck archetype you could try to work towards here with something like Rampage Evolve Abacus. I have no idea if that would work very well. I don't think it would. But I, I like the theme. Evolve gives you bonus draw and fights that add statuses. This gives you block whenever you shuffle. The Rampage, every time you play it, it's going to be better and better. So you just get down to a few cards and try to do... Abacus Shrug Rampage things, and it works okay, maybe? Probably not that well. Certainly I wouldn't pay 88 gold for a Rampage. So, is it worth considering the Whetstone? Upgrade to two of our attacks. Upgrading Perfected Strike would be pretty cool. We're also all but forced to go to a second shop, so I'm cool spending almost nothing here. Although we probably should remove the curse. Feels like I want to do that. Maybe buy a 25 gold shrug it off. That's also very reasonable. But if we do that, we'll still have enough money at the next shop to afford any one card or any one common or shop relic. I'm down for that. We could also maybe consider buying a fire potion. Particularly if I want to go for elites. Yeah, this is this is what I like doing. It seems like a nice choice, after all. Heck, we could even buy an uncommon relic of the next shop, too. Buying Hand of Greed and Whetstone together was 
Not a not an unreasonable choice, actually. Pretty juicy. If you ask me. Let me go for the gray one here first. Need to bash defend. Heck yeah. One damage fight. Keeping the curse would have been a bit awkward, but. Yeah, hand agreed. Hand agreed whetstone was fun if we could afford that. Twin strike? Alternately, Shockwave's pretty hype. How's it going, Atmosphere? Welcome from the YouTube. Always a del delight to see people finding their way here from there. On Flora Zero, my team Hand of Goal, Hand of Greed, or Apotheosis. Actually, it depends on the character, I think. Ironclad, probably Hand of Greed. Most of the other characters, Apotheosis. Definitely on team, take the first shockwave. Although in Act 1, it can be a bit unwieldy. Still really good against Legavulin. I'm taking it. Feed. Alternately, Bag of Marbles or Chemical X are also pretty juicy. Well, not Chemical X, because we have no x cost cards, but you want it to be juicy in the future. As a power in Flame is pretty reasonable. I think Power Potion's not bad either, if we want a potion for the Elite Gauntlet coming up. But it's definitely hard to turn down a feed this early, that's for sure. That said, with what we have, I'm really liking a Bag of Marbles to apply Vulnerable Turn 1 to our opponents. Let's start with that. And I think I take a potion here. Could maybe purchase this Headbutt. I think the Headbutt is a reasonable card. Especially with Shrug. It's just a question of how many cards we want to add to the deck. I think we'll get enough card rewards that we are not going to need to buy this. But I am going to buy this Power Potion for the Sentries fight. You'll see. Get him, Shockwave. Good work. Chonk. We'd also like to upgrade that Perfected Strike as soon as possible. Already hits pretty hard. Power through Flame Barrier and Sever Soul. Interesting. I'm definitely down for a Flame Barrier, especially with Hexaghost as a rack boss. It's a nice dense block card. Uh, although we run up against a problem of too many two-cost cards for now. With three energy per turn, it's awkward to draw them together because we'll have to choose one. I negotiate with terrorists. Thanks for 28 months of support. And Adralor, thanks for 12 months, the full year. Still want to go for elites? You better believe it. All right, blue slaver. Behold the flame barrier power. Etude. Definitely glad I bought a potion. Hello? Oof. All right, we'll have to take some damage here, but that should be all. Okay, Fire Potion's great. Anger as a zero-cost attack is also pretty good. Uh, in particular, when paired with the expensive stuff that's in this deck. Sure, I'll take an Anger. Can help against status card adders as well. We still want to upgrade this Perfected Strike? I think so. Need this to hit like a truck, especially with the vulnerable from the shockwave. Alright, this is probably the fight for the fire potion. How's it going, Romanov? Unfortunately, the Slay the Relics extension is out of commission at the moment. This is why the the thingy no worky. All right, uh, we can at minimum shrug bash next turn. Fire potion finishes it, so that makes a mere six damage fight for the gremlin knob if we commit this potion, which we will. We could also flame barrier shrug, try to preserve the potion. Interesting possibility. Gremlin knob would go to 24, we'll have 20 block. We only take four damage. Hmm. 
Gundam Knob is still vulnerable next turn, and with retaliatory damage from Flame Barrier, I can always still spend the potion. Let's spend the health to try to keep this potion. Although we are quite likely to get a new one. I really like this combo, especially for the next fight. Let's see if we can spend four health, keep the fire potion. We can. And we don't get a potion. We do get Paper Frog. Enemies with Vulnerable take 75% more damage. Well, heck, that is a amazing pairing for the Bank of Marbles that we just bought. And there's a second copy of Perfected Strike being offered to us. It's a match made in heaven. No need for Limit Break here. We don't have any strength. Didn't take that in flame. Give me the P-Strike. Amazing findings. We're going to absolutely chop our way through three more elites very easily now. Our next two chests contain two relics, rather than this chest containing any relic. I actually like taking blue key over this a lot of the time, especially so that you can take the curse key as a fourth energy very comfortably. Um, but this will reasonably pay off by the end of the run, so eh, I'll take it. Let's get some more relics. Can't play Bash because the Bank of Marbles. Interesting. We'd like to play Shockwave. Let's wait. Does that make Curse Key safer? Because if we have the blue key, then we can simply skip all of the remaining chests in the run, choosing not to open them. But we still get to go to Act 4. 47 damage. Holy moly, that hits hard. I think this is where I use the Fire Potion. We can get a kill right now with the Fire Potion. Um, I can block this turn, but next turn will be awkward. So yeah, I think that's a Fire Pot. Kerpow. Still no potion drop, we're at 80%. But we do get the Ancient Tea Scent, giving us bonus energy on turn one after visiting a rest site. That's gonna be very good with this bag of marbles, actually. Almost makes you wanna take a bludgeon. Almost. This definitely wants to become a Sneko deck, doesn't it? I mean, one bludgeon can't hurt, right? To remove Transformer Upgrade. Hmm. Normally I would transform a strike here. It's less good with two P-Strikes. What do we want to do here? I could upgrade something, nice and simple. Upgrade the Bludgeon for plus 10. Upgrade the other Perfected Strike is pretty good too. You could even upgrade Shockwave, expecting to need it against Hexaghost. Paper Frog Bludgeon Plus just does so much damage, though. Do we ever remove Bash? I don't think so, because the Paper Frog. Too, too vulnerable for two energy is actually kind of still worth it in some fights, namely Hexagos. So yeah, let's, up, let's upgrade the Bludgeon. Why not? Make it smash. If it's worth taking, it was worth upgrading. And we're going to have some hilarious turn ones with it. Glad. Bash does 14 damage. Thanks, Paper Frog. Hmm. Legend, hello? Bottled Flame! There it is. All right, we bottle the Bludgeon Plus with the uh, ancient tea set Bag of Marbles Paper Frog. Is that our third limit break? Three limit breaks. If only that first shop had had a brimstone in it. Let's bottle that bludgeon, though. We're, getting, we're praying for Sneko Eye. I'd actually take an event over an upgrade here. Upgrades seem good, though. We want to upgrade the other Perfected Strike, and, yeah, probably that Shockwave, too. 
Let's do it. Also, we want uh, ancient tea set value. 90% potion chance. That's why you buy the potions. Although I don't feel like we're going to need this thing. Run has gone very wacky very quickly. Hello! Squish. And a bag of preparation. Now we draw more stuff on turn one. Yeah, i never seen that one before. Not even the Watcher imitation, right? We didn't even use the sleep turns against Lagavulin. We just killed Lagavulin on turn one. <laughs> Amazing. Just your average elite fight. Don't want to true get Carnage or Body Slam? Not really. We're gonna have full health for Hexaghost. Oops. My bad. Do Shockwave Bludgeon turn one? Seems pretty good. I'm gonna use any potion against Hexaghost. It's gotta be a Thorn Spot, surely. Wish. And we drew Flame Barrier on the correct turn, my favorite sound effect in the game. Incoming. Easy. Poor ghost. Never stood a chance. Let's see double defend here. Exact lethal. The dream. GG. Four limit breaks. Unironically, an immolate fits the deck pretty well. We need a. I, we have lots of big cards, and we love that. Um, and we would love something that can hit everything at once rather than having to separately slap all of the little things that are in fights. So an emulate's perfect to deal with stuff like Grim Leader and Collector. It's going to be absurdly damaging on turn one as well. Yeah, please, for the love of Snack. I should have... That, that's why you skipped the Matryoshka. Ah! Anyway, I took Slaver's Collar. I don't want to skip chess for the rest of the run. Not when I don't have to. Let's just fight elites and nothing else and call it a day. Seems great to me. Oh, bonus points if all of our combats involve the ancient tea set bonus. So actually, what if we just visit a whole bunch of rest sites and did very little else? And we can kind of cheat our way through act two. Why is Flame Barrier illegally distinct from Thorns? Because it looks cooler. It's the only answer I have. Do you skip Matryoshka that often? I say that you should because it lets you take slave, uh, the Curse Key. And that's exactly what we just found. So I should have skipped it for the exact reason that I said beforehand that I should have skipped it. That's okay, though. Hadn't occurred to me that I wouldn't draw a kill here, huh? Guess we're just gonna shrug Flame Barrier? I should have used this potion after all. Dang. Well, fool me once. Ah, no potion. That's fine, then. Almost Strike, Intimidate, or Head Boot? I don't really want another card that's not upgraded. Almost Strike is vaguely okay with two perfected strikes, but it's not even our best attack card, so 
don't know. You're kidding me, right? Oh no, we're too off. We're too off from a kill with Legend turn one. This is the fight for the Essence of Steel, then. We'll take it slow. As slow as is reasonably possible. Hopefully this is better than just taking all the damage on turn one. I'm not sure it was. Could have just taken 21 and won the fight. He chose to do this instead, and I think this was better. Alright, good talk. Feel no pain. Don't actually exhaust very much. Thunderclap Plus is kind of cool. At least it would be if I didn't have a Shockwave Plus. Bolt Vander Huge, thanks for 10 months! There are 10 kinds of people in the world, those who understand binary and those who don't. How's it going, Vito? We settled on a, a soup. Chickpea fritters. A spaghetti dish. And a couple other tasty ones. The Anti-Curse Relic. Not sure what would be the Anti-Curse Relic amongst what we have here. You're talking about Omomori, we don't have that. We have a bottled flame and some other stuff. But there's no Omomori here. Oh yeah, the Matryoshka. This is also not Omomori. This will double the output of the next two chests. So that's why I, that's why I skipped the the Cursed Key, is because this relic makes me want to open treasure chests, because they're going to have two relics inside. But the Cursed Key gives us curses if I do that. So not only are we out the penalty of the cursed key, we also have to waste this relic, too. It's a, it's a double whammy. Hence the Slaver Scholar. This deck would super take a corruption. I'll take one Feel No Pain. It's a little early for a Feel No Pain, but we're doing it. The Galaxy Brain plays. Why didn't I think about this? <laughs> Offer Matryoshka. Lose out on two future relics to gain more rare cards instead. <laughs> we could also give up the Ancient Tea Set, although quite frankly, I, I like the Ancient Tea Set quite a lot. <laughs> amazing. Just amazing. How did we even get here? We're gonna we're gonna give up the the Matryoshka, I think. Extra rare cards is gonna be amazing. One, this deck would love offerings, or corruption, or another bludgeon. I actually don't need a second emulate. We already got that crossed off the list. But there's other possibilities that are nearly endless. Give me the give me the gift in law. Could have had four limit breaks with Red Skull or Sling of Courage. Hm. Self-forming clay can be a very, very good relic. Gain three block whenever we lose health on the next turn. Nice value creator, especially during the heart fight. Bit expensive, though. Wouldn't mind some extra strength during elite fights, especially if I'm going to face several of them. Although we might be just fine. We're going to have four energy per turn in those fights. And possibly more on turn one. I think this might be one of those situations where this is overkill. Sure, we could we could buy this and kill elites easily, but if we can kill elites easily without it, we shouldn't bother spending any money on it. The relic we get from that event triples our chance of finding rare cards from combat rewards. It's a special item given to you only by the event there in Loth. Maybe I should have introduced him more a bit more thoroughly. He's pretty uncommon to, to see, and even more uncommon to actually get the gift. C 
secret weapon. Actually. Hmm. With the feel no pain, I could see it. Bit expensive, but it's not bad. Ah. Assuming we don't find a Sneko Eye. Hmm. Yeah, not not terrible. Definitely one of those cards we're going to want to get in duplicate at some point. This could be a good opportunity to make it happen. The mastery challenge is definitely going to see us purchasing more rare cards at shops. For sure. There's another shop coming up this act, though, actually. So I think what I'll do is save my money. All of it. Not even going to buy or remove. Nah, I'm going to buy one remove. Maxim 2K, thanks for the nine months of support. Yes, removing a strike. Despite the perfected strikes. This is why you don't take Cursed Key. All right, we get a... Oh, wait, no, the Matryoshka. No, it's gone. All right, that's fine, though. We get uh, plus one dexterity. Or the blue key. Take the one dex. Only we could have seen that in a different order, like used up the Matryoshka and then given it away to in-law. But this is mostly fine. Mostly, mostly fine. Act boss is collector. We definitely want this immolate upgraded. Definitely. All right. Six energy on turn one versus the Book of Stabbing. Who is rolling 24 on turn one. How rude. Bonk. And I guess I'll block for nine. All right, pretty okay turn one. I do say so myself. And then you're dead. The damage. We get plus one strength to go with our plus one dexterity. What a lovely pairing. And in Lost Gift says two extra rare cards have been generated already. That means we're looking at two rare cards here and another perfected strike. How adorable. Oh, man. That's funny. Are rare cards actually more difficult to master? We have more rare cards mastered than commons or uncommons. I think the uncommons are going to be particularly tricky. But we should grab the first corruption. Feels right to me. We're going to be able to grab imperviodes going forward. Amongst other things. Definitely make it two cost though. You're very expensive, corruption. The Koye. Glad we saved our money. Now the merchant restocks. And is 20% discounted. If this is not a combat, which it isn't, then we're able to do the thing. Didn't take self-forming clay. We could take the Warped Tongs Relic here, which upgrades a random card in our hand every turn. Uh, although more often lately, I'm preferentially just upgrading a card of my choosing and calling it a day. I like getting the Feel No Pain upgraded here in particular. You'll get through it, Pain's or just trying to keep a stiff upper lip. Three strikes to 12. 75. Oh, that's so close, but not quite. I think we look at the card on top first. All right, nothing special. So probably just feel no pain, shockwave, kill the fat gremlin, take... A little bit of damage here. Actually, take zero damage, right? No, that's even better. Take nothing. Ah. Strike twice if I wanted to, but I don't know why I would.
All right, we're very likely to draw Immolate next turn, so let's just leave the Shield Gremlin alive. Hit the leader here. Maybe we wanted to use a Power Potion in this fight. Perfect. Nice fight. Four extra rare cards. Feed and double tap. Double tap with corruption and all these huge attacks is kind of insane, actually. I think the feed will be difficult to land. Give me double tap. As well as an ink bottle, which will draw many cards. Prismatic Shard is here. As is another Perfected Strike. Hmm. Champ's Belt. Whenever you apply Vulnerable, also apply one weak. That is essentially like buying the Red Mask, as we'll now activate Weakness with the Bank of Marbles. That's kind of cool. If we're fighting Champ, I'd, it might be worth it just to challenge him proper like... What about removing Bash? I still think it's something we're going to want. First time we run into an enemy with artifact layers, we're really going to appreciate Double Tap Bash. How does Necronomicon and Double Tap work? Two doublings is a tripling. Or you can think of each effect as one additional card play. You will play it three times. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna buy this. Man, there's a strawberry underneath. Hmm. Do we want another perfected strike? Signs point to yes. And one less regular strike? Signs point to probably. Okay, that'll work. Take an event here instead of a combat. Hmm. Might as well, huh? It's a Sneko. Sneko, please bless my run with your eye. Thanks. These aren't ironclad cards. Cloak and Dagger is kind of interesting. With Feel No Pain Plus, actually, this is kind of absurd. Also, Corruption. I mean, yeah, give me a Cloak and Dagger Plus. That's a lot of block. And upgrade this too, I suppose. Could also consider upgrading Flame Barrier or maybe even the Bash. We could also Rest or Recall. I'm actually done to Recall here. Let's do that. Let's Recall. Need more options next act. Mm, I was worried we might get Shockwave turn one. It's going to make Immolate a little less useful. Maybe we'll just be able to double tap it though. Seems fine. Definitely not going to not play the Shockwave with our energy here. How about the Power Pot? Do we want to use it? Snack packs, thanks for 13 months, the baker's dozen. Can we master cards off character? We sure can. The rules of the challenge allowed it. So far, we have mastered Carnage on the Watcher already. Uh, yeah, I'll do it. This is still pretty good. All right, a little bit of extra help. No double tapped immolate, unfortunately. But I can absolutely slap, so let's start with that. You can play this twice. 24 more damage or block 6. Another 24. 
Let's go very aggro. Yeah, that should be a kill next turn. GG. Sliced to pieces. Limit break number five. Thunder Strike makes our perfected strikes better. Or we could just take a Master of Strategy, which seems like a pretty cool card. Definitely the, the best pick, objectively speaking. Zero cost, draw three, fantastic. Even if we get a Sneko Eye, the Corruption will override and it'll be free. Just way too good. Give me that. Aha! It happened, Twitch chat. The double snap pick boss relic run. We are now a Sneko Deco with Corruption, Bludgeon, and three Perfected Strikes. What a day. What a day. That means we draw two more cards each turn. So base seven draw per turn, but we're confused. All of our cards are random cost. That's zero, one, two, or three cost with equal probability, mind you. Uh, and that's rather exploitable, as it turns out. Nice four Elite Path, heck yeah. And we get early events. I love Act 3 events because some of them are so juicy. I might even take 999 gold with the Courier. Yeah, I would. I'm a sucker. Cool, let's do this then. Character is Sneko best on? I think Ironclad is probably the best Sneko character by far. Ironclad's... Three cost cards are so good that simply being able to play two of them in the same turn is often game breaking. Watcher can be a very good uh, Sneko character too, but I, I really feel like Clad does it better than anyone. The champ of Bonk. So we can just do. Two. Monk. Great fight. Skewer's kind of interesting. Such a confusing relic. Defect can definitely break Sneko very well also, but with a, with a specific set of cards. But I feel like Ironclad just has so many different cards that work with Sneko spectacularly. Why does Ironclad now have an orb slot? That's the effect of the Prismatic Shard, the shop relic that we bought. It's also why we're seeing cards that are not of the Ironclad anymore. Since we could pick up defect cards, we're also offered the ability to have an orb slot. Have to lose a card, immolate, corruption, or shrug. Sorry, shrug it off. Actually, you're a really important card, aren't you? Hmm. Bummer. Yeah, see you later, Shrug. Not losing corruption, that's for sure. All right, those events have been uh, swinging a miss for the most part. But here's the good one. Glowing Tesseract offers us colorless cards galore, and this is potentially huge for us. Well, maybe not. That's also a bit of a swing and a miss. I could... M Didn't we already master purity? I feel like we did. Yes, we did. So I can't even do that. Dark Shackles is pretty good. Don't think Panache does much. Yeah, it's pretty sad. Could take two deep breaths here, although those are definitely pretty sad on their own. They're okay once Corruption's in play. I'm just going to take the Dark Shackles and take the, uh, the card that I think will actually be useful here. Another average combat. Low cost skills. I have to take some block cards. Almost want to take this deflect plus. 
I actually, I'm going to do it. It's not a very good card. But we just need corruption fuel. Essentially. Bonk. Note how I'm just ignoring the minions now in all of these various fights and just going straight for the boss creature. It's pretty good. Boop. Dead Branch. Also, fifth rare card. Alpha. Corruption Alpha with Snekawai. Let's do it. It's a skill, adds a beta into the draw pile. Beta's a skill, adds an Omega, which is normally a three cost power. Snekawai makes it a random cost power that says deal 50 damage to all enemies every turn. And yeah, you better believe I'm taking the stick. What made me pick up the Prismatic Shard? A quest for fun. This is primarily what I'm looking for when I pick this thing up. If you give it the opportunity to surprise you, it really can. There's some very cool cross-class interactions you can find. Is it a strategically sound decision most of the time? No. But it doesn't need to be. Not playing further attacks here as I don't want to change what it uh, this enemy was doing there. Chopped to bits. Discovery Plus. Also pretty hype here. We could have had double discovery. We've already had a run with that, though. Uh, regardless, it is a sweet card. It's a skill that makes a gives us a choice of new cards, and then that new card is free. So it's quite a quite an efficiency generator. This can make free powers and attacks for us. I like it quite a lot. Starting to like a Now that we have Dead Branch, Elixir is very good. Cultist Pot versus Block Pot. Feels like uh, one strength per turn no longer does much of anything for us. So I don't have any need for that. Do I want to make the Alpha innate? I don't think it matters that much. Let's keep upgrading the Perfected Strikes. Why not? The unupgraded version of Discovery has the Exhaust keyword on it. Since we're using Corruption, which will add the Exhaust keyword to all skills, it, it's going to have it anyway. Not much of a difference, really. Yep. Pretty average turn one. Get a dream catcher. And a claw? No, I'm not taking a claw. Crippling Cloud is too weak to all enemies, and a little bit of poison doesn't feel that good either. No need for any of this. What's the shop got? A Dolly's Mirror is what it has. This is it, Twitch chat. <laughs> <laughs> And the second feel no pain to boot. Double alpha. Ah. Now this is a run. And yeah, I do want a second feel no pain. All right, we still have to win the run. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too difficult, but, you know, inspire anything can happen. costs. I don't know what I was thinking. Doesn't matter.
All right, I feel like we have to deploy Alpha Beta Omega if possible here. Not not enough to just win regular like. We're an Alpha Beta Omega deck. We got to use it. Otherwise, what separates us from the animals? You know. Shuffle an Omega into the draw pile. Ink bottle. Draw me a card, please. Why, yes, that is the card I wanted. Zero cost Omega. Thanks. The power. Seven extra rare cards. Tools of the trade and emulator here. Tantrum, by the way. Don't think I want a tantrum. Master tools of the trade. I don't think so. I've already got Immolate crossed off the list, so I'm not obliged to grab the second one here. I'll skip. Ah. This is about what I expected to see from this shop. One final elite. What did you do? What didn't I do? <laughs> what didn't I do? Free barricade? Don't mind if I do. Clash value. A hundred and eighty nine damage. The bludgeoning. Double Omega. Amazing. Just amazing. Keep these potions. The best alpha deck of all time, it's true. Unequivocally so. First boss is gonna be Time Eater. Better count our cards here. One. I'm gonna play this bludgeon on your face, aren't I? They are. Appropriate time to use the block potion. But not necessary. We'll leave it. This looks a bit better. Feel no pain, dark shackles will be enough to block. Go to the next turn. is a little tricky, actually. This is a reasonable time to use the block potion now. Corruption on the bottom, unfortunately, as well as the shockwave, has uh, led to some difficult situation. But I like uh, feel no pain, defend, beta, block potion here. Maybe wanted to take a bit more because of meat on the bone? Hmm. Corruption, what are you doing? Hmm. 
can't play the Omega this way, but we'll get this Alpha down. No point in playing Discovery. Alright, Corruption on the bottom is not the worst thing in the world. By any means. So we'd like to take about four more damage, if possible. Be a little difficult with Feel No Pain 8, but I'm sure we can figure it out. Okay, here's our Omega. This is the first one. Uh, this is taking 4 damage. Sounds good to me. Beautiful. Now, Meat on the Bone is active. And you are getting bonked. Twice. Ish. Double. Omega. Restore your health all you want. It won't save you from a hundred damage per turn. A very reasonable health total for the second boss. We can buy a new potion from the Act 4 shop if necessary. I am not sure how necessary it will be. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and play that right now. This might actually be a slight problem. Only time will tell. We do have the elixir in case things get really ugly and we end up with a hand of seven attack cards that I can't do anything with. That seems likely to be sufficient. One more, please. One. Look at that block total. Easy. Keep this defend for later. Omega's gonna kill this nerd, although we do need to do one damage. I guess the flame bearer will suffice, huh? I'm not gonna play the emulate. This is the spooky part. I think I'd rather kill next turn than this turn. play the demon form if I want to, and I do. Also, I might draw a block, maybe. Not that there's really a need to draw. There is no block to draw. The good news is we have two more health than necessary, so I think we should just win the fight and not waste our potion here. I'll get a card reward for resting anyway at the beginning of the next act. Block card. Easy. Incorrect attack order, though. That's fine. 
Get him, Omega. Saying ink bottle to nine here. GG. Beautiful. Two thump, two thump, two thump. A deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this Greek alphabet soup? Ready your belly, dealing 2385. Have I been here before? Joseph Ellis, thanks for the two months in the Prime sub. I've been hearing a lot about this Packmaster mod, and it seems like there's shoutouts to various streamers within it from what little I've seen of it. Might be something we have to take a look at next time the sub bar below my face fills up. Should be pretty soon. Community support has been absurd last uh, couple weeks. Um, we're resting. We talked about this. We need health, and I want the card reward. And I have no good upgrades. Could have had triple deep breath. Honestly, this is more corruption fuel. I will allow it. Can't afford the second master strategy, though it did appear to us. Pretty okay with a liquid memories or a liquid bronze. If I could afford barricade, I'd rather do that. That's your blood. You know, I once asked my dad what my blood type was, but I could never get a straight answer out of him. He just kept telling me over and over to be positive. Great opening draw here. Eric keeps asking what LGBTI LGBTQIA plus means, but nobody ever gives them a straight answer. You hear about the fire at the circus? It was intense. So we'll draw a card the first time I play a card here. And we also have Master Strategy, which can draw more cards and then exhaust, creating another new card. No double tap in hand, no way to make anything vulnerable, other than maybe using the liquid memories. I'm not 100% certain who I should be targeting first here. Well, I like the idea of using Bash to make Dark Shackles available on the spear. Okay. Let's start with that. There's Double Tap. Of course. Okay, so now I can now I can do fancy things with the Liquid Memories. Because we can Double Tap Bash Bludgeon for how much damage? Uh, Bash does... Where's the discard pile? Here. Nine damage base. So I have to do paper frog math here. Nine times 1.75 is equal to 15. So it's going to be nine plus 15 damage initially. And then we've established that bludgeon does 75 twice. So plus 150 equals 174 damage. Yeah. Time to glug. Nine cards in hand. Yes, nine cards in hand. Double tap. Double bash. Double bludgeon. We could have also done double tap bludgeon 
Liquid Memories, the Bludgeon, Bludgeon again. Which would have been... Uh, 43 times 4. It's actually not enough damage to kill. Or no, it's 172. That is a, that is enough to kill, but it would have been slightly less than the line we did. Very nice. Very nice. All right, I suppose I'll defend with the deflect here. This enemy won't attack me next turn. Gives me time to find my corruption. Yeah, that, that's 172 without vulnerable, to be clear. No vulnerable required. You. Be weak and vulnerable. It's 30 block. We can easily kill it with the bludgeon and another decent attack card. Or I can try to discover something. Let's just take the bludgeon back. Legend Immolate should be enough, yeah? Yeah, that's just a kill. Straightforward and simple. I'm gonna go ahead and do some corruption things just to set Ink Bottle to a higher number before the heart fight. Every little advantage counts, after all. Get a Pantograph, healing us to full immediately prior to the heart. We're offered a Heat Sinks Carnage Eviscerate. Heat Sinks are fun. Not really necessary, but uh, kind of fun here. We won't take it. All right. We have full health, we have an elixir, and we have, of course, dead branch corruption as we go into the heart fight with double alpha. What an ironclad run. Let's go, Twitch chat. We drew corruption turn one, and it's free. Don't think it gets much better than that. I'm certainly not going to not play it. Um... Could try to block first. I'll keep this flame barrier around. Keep my health at full here. All right, now draw two. Okay. Discover an exhum. Let's make it back anything from the exhaust pile. There's some fun options in there. Hmm. Alright, this I'll play. More alpha! Don't be ridiculous. Why would I exhume Alpha when I could exhume Beta? And destroy all this. Limit break. Oh man, barricade. Is there any way? Well, I'll take the feel no pain. That seems pretty good. This in play as well. All right, pretty excellent turn one versus heart. We did full 200 damage. It's debuffed with weak and vuln. We got many powers set up, and there are two omegas in the draw pile. which are now in my hands. Seems pretty good. Oh. Now there are three Omegas in my hands. Can only play two of them, though. This is a good time to use the Elixir. Oh, now there are four Omegas. Go ahead and play this.
I'm not even done making Omegas. Or barricades. Gotta let Omega do all the damage, it only seems fair. Not again. Give me energy generation. Oh, embarrassing. I guess we could only benefit from four of them anyway, all right? There it is. 200 damage per turn. Kerblam. GG, Mr. Hart. GG. Amazing. GG. What an absurd run. And an equally unlikely way to achieve mastery of the alpha card. Thanks to Dolly's Mirror. What a wild one. Hot nonsense yet again as a result of our mastery challenge. So thrilled to see the kinds of runs we're able to, to come up with. Bistorable, thanks for three full years of support. Much love. And Palada EX, thank you for nine months. Closing in on that one full year. Heck yeah. What a silly time. How much health could the heart have had and we still win with that deck? Not as much as you'd think. Maybe maybe another 800 or so. But we don't actually stay alive that long. We're going to run out of block eventually. Even with Dead Branch Corruption, eventually you'll end up with just attacks and skills. Uh, attacks and uh, powers that don't do anything. And the heart will shred through a couple hundred accumulated block really fast. So far, we're, our win rate's been better than expected. I still think we're averaging well above half of our runs being won. We're definitely getting short streaks, although we're having the occasional loss. There's definitely more green than red in the run history. Dome, thanks for 18 months of support and the prime sub. Heck yeah, a year and a half. So excited to see what Silent comes up with. Can't believe we never actually got two bludgeons, though. Yeah, so excited to see what Silent comes up with. Will it be another kunai run, or will something even more absurd occur? Either way, you'll have to wait a few minutes first. I'm going to take a quick break here, Twitch chat, refill the legs, stretch the water. I'll take this opportunity to... plug our HelloFresh sponsorship, which is running for the next 30 days. Um... HelloFresh being a meal delivery service, you can get cheap, tasty groceries and meals, like meal recipe kits delivered to your front door. Teaches you how to be a better at-home cook and get results in some really tasty at-home meals, has been my uh, opinion of it. Exclaim HelloFresh here. If you sign up for one or more boxes, then yours truly will get a substantial amount of stream kickback from that. So it becomes a super efficient way for you to get something that you want, food, which is required by everybody to not die, last I checked, uh, and me to get something that I need, which is support for the stream to keep doing what it does. So it's a win-win if that happens to be up your alley. Something I figured I'd mention. Anyway, I'll be back in a few minutes, Twitch chat. Upon my return, we'll play some more Slay the Spire. Don't go nowhere, folks. BRB.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, we have returned. Appreciate you hanging out. Silence up next. Get a random rare relic, a random rare card, or ye old boss swap. Lots of early stores. Not necessarily something you want on silence. Hmm. I could see taking this path pretty reasonably. And then going this way. Get two elites that way. Otherwise, maybe just take three upgrades, get the burning elite. Definitely inclined to take a random rare relic. I do like random rare relics a lot. And they can really shape a run in, in delightful fashion. Let's do it. Yeah, we got a fossilized helix. Prevent the entire first instance of damage each combat. Maybe that means we can take an early elite or something. Let's start here. And we have some options, pathing-wise. Well, I can't go three elites. I could. If I'm willing to go through two dead stores, probably not. Anyway, that's a, an incredible first relic to get, that's for sure. Truly incredible. How much damage do I think this relic will save me this act? Well, the stat it gives will be a little bit, little bit misleading, because we'll intentionally take certain hits to more maximally use it, but I'd say probably at least 50. That's my guess, 50. Uh, if we have the immunity to the first instance of damage, then Masterful Stab surely is much better than usual. Zero cost to deal 12, but gets more expensive as we take damage, which we won't be doing. Neat! Synergy, the power. You know what, let's just do this. So like here, for example, I can I can take the hit and increase the number by four, or I could not. Early dash also a pretty good sign usually. Maybe we can go this way after all. Flechettes. Now let's take a dash. Bannerman, 1903, thanks for six months, the whole heckin' half year. Kerchonk. Truly interesting. Yeah, I think I might have rated Masterful Stab D tier on my own tier list. I, I did make tier lists for all the various Spire cards uh, at one point. Skewer, also a, a proven early silent attack. I really like that, actually. Nice X coster over the defensive options. Although Piercing Whale surely is not bad. The best, that's right. what it stands for. All right, if we're going to go to a shop, we can at least hit it with enough money to remove a strike. That'll be worthwhile then. Hmm. Survivor dash, full blocks, doesn't even use the buffer. Seems better to maybe get one of them killed, though, surely. No, block 18. Block 18. We can kill one next turn. Uh, surely we'll be taking damage next turn, or at least losing the buffer, but for the moment, things are good. Just wondering. So, 9 plus 2, we can do 11 damage. We can kill this one if we want to. Which prevents the damage. Next turn's going to be awkward, though. We'll take six and six again. Not much I can do about that. Or I could take four damage this turn to more likely prevent six damage next turn. That seems like the better play. Uh... 
Um, I guess I can make it three damage. And one damage this turn. We're done. Four damage total. Very good. How's it going, Silvardo? Life's good. And, and yeah, for, and just to just be clear, I'm the one who originally called Masterful Stab the D tier card. But a card that is not often useful in a card that is currently useful are not necessarily different things. Hmm. Footwork. Better blocks seem pretty sweet here. I don't really like Noxious Fumes that much. Uh, we're fighting Guardian, so footwork is kind of innately better already there. Uh, and we're already scaling into physical damage with Masterful Stab, Dash, and Skewer, so I'm a little bit less inclined to go Poison, at least for now. More inclined to go Caltrops, actually. Heal 11 for 35 gold, no way. We're not forced into, but likely going to this store. And I don't think I'm gonna need the health anyway. So I'm gonna keep my money, cleric, and be on my way. Hmm. Definitely wanna rush down one of the sentries as quickly as you can in this combat. Hopefully we draw a skewer next turn. We can maybe use the swift potion to help with that. Fortunately, we don't. So I could simply footwork, survivor, strike, let the buffer block 110. Draw a skewer to bend next turn. I guess that's not a particular problem either way, right? Yeah, yeah, okay, that's fine. No need for the Swift Potion, then. This is perfect. Don't strike here, because we've already got Skewer for two to kill this one. If I want a full block, I could... Could actually strike and Skewer for one, double block next turn. Feels like we gotta get more done than that, though. Although full blocking is important, because the Masterful Stab, eh, not that important. Start work on the middle one now. Hmm. So far, so good. Really good. Really, really good. He looks already at twenty one. Root juice and a war paint. Interesting. War paint will upgrade two skills at random. Just defense or survivor. There's nothing else to upgrade and no skills I can take here either. We want heal hook quick slash or flying knee. Hey, Faley. Yes, we mastered perfected strike. Also, alpha on that run. Yep, that happened. On Ironclad, yes. Yes. So when when people ask me, how do you build an Omega Alpha deck on Watcher, I'll point them to that video and say, here's how you do it. 
and I'll be even more confused than before. I guess this poor swift potion's getting discarded so I can drink up some fruit juice. Double defend upgrade is expected and perfectly fine when you've got a footwork. Do I need... Actually, Flying Knee Skewer is pretty good. I'll take a Flying Knee. The Flying Knee can give us a 4 energy Skewer, which can hit extra hard. And is a nice, decent attack alongside anyway. And we are able to remove a Strike if I want to go this way. Or we could skip the shop and instead take an extra upgrade. Go through the Burning Elite. I'm going to opt for more Relics. That is the philosophy I've been operating under lately, and it's been working out pretty well for me. I did say we could consider Caltrops. I'm going to consider it for one nanosecond before I remove a strike here. Really do want to get rid of these basic strikes, even as you add better attacks on Silent. They just do not work very well late into the run, unfortunately. All right, do I need to consider potions in this fight? We should probably just drink the fruit juice now and maybe use the Entropic Brew so I know what I have to work with. Maybe that was better to do at the shop. But we had no money for potions, so... Perfectly balanced, that's right. Just master... an equal number of cards on every character. This does seem like it's going to be a difficult combat. Okay, let's see what the potion has. Cunning Pot, Weak Pot. Okay, Cunning Pot's probably enough. To help us get by. Also got a buffer, don't forget. That helps too. Dash neutralize, defend full blocks next turn. Actually, just dash defend blocks fully next turn, but I to make it a full block. Or I could skewer for three and neutralize. Really just not that much damage here. All right, let's get started. Big Potion would also save the buffer here. not draw the skewer, unfortunately. That's no good. I run out of damage really fast. With minus two strength, do I need to use the shift potion now with what we've drawn? I was really hoping we'd get skewer this turn. I do 15 next turn. Yeah, we're gonna run out of damage very fast. I better use this. Lagavulin can be very, very difficult matchup for Silent. Hoping to use the buffer this turn, but this is fine. Ended up not needing it, actually. Hmm. Interesting. Either way, we get a fear potion that's excellent, and a malaise. A second X cost card is kind of delightful. Don't really feel like I need two flying knees. Give me a malaise. Enemy loses X strength and applies X weak. Dander, thanks for 38 heckin' months. That is many months. Always happy to see Turnip alongside Block Heavy Silent, by the way. When our defense block for 10, we really appreciate not being able to be uh, hit with the frail status. That's going to help a lot in Act 2 and Act 4. Against the heart. Makes you want to upgrade that uh, malaise. Upgraded malaise is mighty spicy, although we've got a gremlin knob we might need to be able to deal with here, so we're going to upgrade skewer first. Need that uh, multi-hit to be potentially stronger. It's also pretty good in this fight. But only pretty good.
Okay, not bad, not bad. Could even Fear Pot neutralize to keep my buffer. I don't need to do that. Well... Hmm. So the next turn I footwork, play one of these two, or play both of them. Probably saves me a full 10 health, actually, to use that Fear Pot. Although it might be better to use it to... Now we have buffer for Guardian's Big Hit. Or we could save it to the next act. It's more likely what it'll be used for. Feels like I have enough health. Let's try to save it for next act. The potion, that is. Scotino, thanks for seven months of sub -port. Good stuff. Mon skewer. Easy. Also defend. Perfect. Go neutralize flying knee here. Skewer here. Beautiful. Thank you, ink bottle. Excellent. Potion saved, and we didn't take a point of damage. We do deal a point of damage with the Vajra here. All of our attacks deal one more damage. That's definitely going to help get through the next few fights, for sure. Damaging common cards that I'm not particularly excited by. Let's skip these. I would take a Blade Dance at this point, because we have both Ink Bottle and Vajra. But uh, none of those offerings. Slay the Relics is unfortunately down, Stanikin. So you won't see any success with it. 20. Currently broke. Broke, but not bespoke. You're next. I've set up the ink bottle further, but chose not to. Dagger spray is half decent with the Vajra. Outmaneuver is actually pretty good with two different X cost cards. Now that's interesting. Outmaneuver, skewer, and malaise. Let's try it. It'll need an upgrade so that it says next turn gain three energy, but I think it's going to be well worth it. Really well worth it. Uh, let's take another event. Why not? How many is another card I uh, rarely get much use out of? Give up the flying knee. I actually like the flying knee, though. Lose the fear pot for a relic? Let's do it. It's a ninja scroll. We get three shivs on turn one. That's amazing. 15 free damage and three tenths of a draw. Let's see how this does. Pretty good start. Simply malazing for three should be pretty sufficient to shut down most of what the Guardian does damage-wise. So I don't think we need to try to get the outmaneuver malaise lined up. Here we can play all five cards. That's kind of cool. Although, we want to play... Yeah, actually, yeah, all of them. Perfect block. That's not so bad. Not so bad at all. I 
kind of assume the outmaneuver will be worth it to play it. It isn't always. But you have to hope it will be. Note that uh, with multi-hit moves against the Guardian, you only take damage one time per card you play, not per time the attack hits. So even though Skewer hits three times, we only take damage from Guardian's Thorns once. That works differently to the enemies in Act 3, for some reason. Will hit you for each hit of a multi-hit attack with spikes. And look at that, seven damage Skewer, GG. Or seven energy Skewer, rather. You, you get the idea, 77 damage. And a good time. We're offered Corpse Explosion, Storm of Steel, Bullet Time. What a fun set of options. Pretty down for a Corpse Explosion here. A Corpse Explosion plus Skewer in particular lets us take one enemy, kill it outright, and have all of the enemies in the combat die. We also have plenty of ways to play it with our energy generators. How's it going, uh... Garnis Tuda, my favorite character is the Defect, the blue robot. I think they've got the most different ways to play, personally. Kylios, thanks for four months of support. No Runic Pyramid, I'm offended. We're offered, energy-wise, the Fusion Hammer, preventing us from getting further upgrades. Or the Runic Dome, preventing us from seeing enemies in attack intents, which is a little difficult to play around. Not impossible, but I uh, definitely appreciate, especially with buffer, really want to know what the enemies are doing exactly. So you can do precise math. Could take Black Star, get extra relics from elites. Although I think we might, actually, we're pretty good against elites in Act 2, are we not? We have Malaise to defeat the Book of Stabbing. We have Corpse Explosion to defeat the other two. Hmm. And we have Fossilized Helix to prevent damage. I'm sold. Let's try it. It's only because I have specific answers to each of the different possible elites that we can encounter this act that I make that I think this is a reasonable choice. Could go for an early burning elite that seems questionable. At bestionable. Try to make it just one store this act. I don't know if we can make that work. You combats on the way to the Elite is preferable here. The hard pool combats in Act 2 can be really nasty. This also gives the opportunity to go for the Burning Elite if we want to. Okay. Gotta make sure I update the command to reflect that the HelloFresh only works in the US. It's likely the problem you ran into, uh, hot toddies, if you're outside of the US. If you're inside of the US, then that is not what's supposed to happen. If you're in Wisconsin, hmm. Hmm. Let me update my command anyway. Is Wisconsin in the U.S.? It is. Makes all our cheese. We need that cheese. We need that cheese. All right, what's the current HelloFresh command? Here it is. So, command...
Let's try this one. <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So if, if you're in the US and the, the, the streams link from the chat bot doesn't work, then I recommend trying the uh, the letter code, poghf86607 uh, on hellofresh.com. And if that's not working, then I have a bigger problem that I have to solve. I don't know what that is, but... Where's things first? Spire. Oh, hello. Don't mind if I do corpse explosion the, this one. Guess we're not playing the out maneuver then. That's fine. Probably do want to hit the back one with at least a little bit of damage so it does die to the corpse explosion. There we go. Play that for the ink bottle. And here we could just block almost all the damage. Can't quite get the kill. Can't quite full block. And that's okay. I think I'll just take the the four. Because it'll be over after next turn. Does the US really have real cheese? Oh definitely. Yeah, there's there's mass marketed garbage, but you can absolutely get very high quality cheese if you go to a a grocer who know is worth their salt or a, a deli plenty of real cheese to be had here good stuff too uh, i highly recommend personally if you want um for, for those of you who are near trader joe's trader a, uh, a trader joe's of some kind trader joe's has some really high quality wisconsin cheddar for very Affordable prices. I love it. Kerblam. There it is. Terror applies vulnerable. It's going to make all these physical attacks do so much more damage. Definitely need this card. I would call this one of the best, if not the best card for enabling physical damage builds on the silence. Any goat cheese in the U.S.? Yes. I like me a good goat cheese. You'll have to pay a lot if you want to get goat cheese here, but, you know, like 20 or $30 per pound. Usually you get kind of like a little quarter quarter pound package for 10 bucks or something. Um, but it's good. You can definitely get tasty goat cheese here. I've even been to a couple very small farms in Vermont and and bought goat cheese direct from the source. So I know, I know for a fact there are people raising goats not too far away from me and making cheese out of it. Good cheese. Tasty cheese. Welcome. Surprise merchant. That's excellent news. With an adrenaline. Ooh. And a ghost in a jar. Hello. I bought it from a goat. The most talkative goat I ever met. For some reason you thought I was a fellow Canadian, I I am an expatriate, as it were. Born in Canada, spent most of my life now in the uh, northeastern United States. Not too dissimilar a vibe. Definitely like getting rid of a strike as well. Such a good potion, though. Do I dare pay 155 for adrenaline? With ink bottle, you better believe I do. Leaving me with 165. Enough for card removal and block pot. Although, if I'm going to another store, what difference does it make? I do have to go to that shop if I want the rest site. Or I could take two late events, one less rest site. That might be worth it. Hmm. <laughs> if we take the ghost, we can go for the burning elite, they say. You may be correct about that.
Oh, that's fun. All right, you've convinced me. Let's do it. Actually quite happy to see this foe. Why? Because buffer blocks their nonsense entirely. That's why. Get hacked. You stinky parasite. We just strike for 30 here. Forget the corpse explosion. Attack! Look at that. Love that ink bottle is set to that number, but that's fine. Deflect flying knee slice. An adequate deflect. Would much prefer an upgraded version. Same with the slice, I guess. The strongest character playable. Depends on how you would phrase that. I think the character that can be most successful... In terms of reaching the strongest most powerful decks most frequently would probably be the Ironclad. Ironclad can break the game done correctly. The most consistently powerful in well-trained hands would be the, the Watcher, who's able to, to very reliably smash through the game uh, with some practice. So I'd, I'd, I'd nominate either of those two as answers. For players who play the game at a high level, we see a, a bit higher success rate for the Ironclad and Watcher than for the Defect and the Watch uh, and the Silent, who tend to fa fall a little bit further behind. Cards aren't quite good enough. Not quite. Just go for broke. Thank goodness for buffer. Twelve plus seven. Good enough. Uh, bonus points if I can play another card first. Beautiful. Still don't get Watcher. Just never clicked with her. Watcher's all about setting yourself up for future turns and, and sort of bursting with a little bit of prep. Um, bursting down your foes in one or two turns. Really having decisive, effective things. You can also build infinite combos with Watcher quite reliably. That can work really well. Am I using some mods? I am. I've got a few visual mods on the screen. Here's a, a full list of everything we're running. The main ones to point out are Info Mod, which displays the chance for us to find a potion, as well as a few other things, like the odds of exactly getting a shop or treasure in the next question mark room, uh, as well as Relic Stats, which displays the total numeric effect of certain relics. For example, turnip counts how many times it's blocked frail. Fossilized helix counts how much damage it's prevented. Doing a nice job. And so on and so forth. I'm taking a backflip. And we said we're going for this burning elite. But first we must get past the duo. Centurion plus Mystic. Turnip's going to put in some work here. So is Buffer. I think we're going to go ahead and outmaneuver here. Though I could just Flying Knee. Mystic cannot attack next turn. She will have to buff Strength. Centurion may or may not attack us. Depends. Chooses not to. So now Mystic can never attack next turn. Mystic will be forced to heal on this turn. Centurion chooses to attack. If I could get a kill, that'd be really nice. Ink bottle, save me. 
Dang it. Not quite. We can do 16 out of the required 21 damage. Seems wise to just play the Corpse Explosion. We don't have buffer, though. Hold on, that's all already gone. Uh, so I'd better play the dash here, or else. Take eight. I'm okay with that. It's operating under the assumption I still had my buffer. That was not correct. Keeping the Essence of Steel was rather important. I really want the Essence of Steel and Ghost and Jar together so that I can always preserve fossilized Helix in the next fight. Bouncing Flask and Leg Sweep. Bouncing Flask is kind of nice for stacking poison, but that's not really what I'm looking to do here. If I'm ready here, Hot Toddies, I'll have to look into that more tonight. See if I can figure out what's going on. Definitely appreciate the attempt, though. Thanks for trying to use that code. Like Sweep is always nice to have, definitely. A little bit less nice when you've got a malaise, a little bit less nice when you're energy starved. I actually don't think I want it right now. Hmm. My favorite character is the Defect, the robot in blue. I like the Defect because they have the most different ways to win the game. At least that's how I feel about it. Corpse Explosion, definitely here to help us with the Gremlins. Usually I don't mind Grim Leader attacking us on turn one. This is a bonus max health Grim Leader, it looks like. Interesting. The bald robot. The robot. Uh, let's start with shivs. Shivs here. Three shivs and the corpse explosion kills the fat gremlin. We're probably going to do that. We also get to draw three more cards and we get malaise. Okay, that may change things. If I go strike survivor malaise, what happens? It goes down to... Four by three, which is weakened to three by three. Take one damage. Essence of Steel gets me there. What if I just strike Malaise? Three by three goes to two by three. We'd lose the buffer. Hmm. I could also just go Survivor Defend Defend. For 18 block. Can't do Survivor Defend Essence of Steel. I try to use the corpse explosion. So what if I malaise for one? Goes to five, then three by three. So yeah, actually, we're fine if I use the essence of steel. Survivor and malaise for one. Okay, let's do that. Because that also then deals 20 damage to the shield gremlin and the gremlin leader. This is a pretty underwhelming turn. Unfortunately, I'm definitely worried about this fight now. Oh, gush. Gush? Goodness. There we go. Get the terror down on the Grim Leader. Okay, this is better. This is better. We need to kill the wizard immediately. That's for sure. Next turn being attacked would not be the worst, though. Terror needs to go on the leader. 13 plus skewer for one is a kill here. But not with flying me. So we go terror... Flying knee, skewer for one, draw a card, oof. Still worth it. Skewer and a maneuver. Hmm. Definitely a good opportunity to get some more damage done. Tempting to play out maneuver, but I think I'd rather just do the bonus damage right now. Hmm. 
Well, surely it lets me play another strike or something, right? Alright. It's also one more. Step towards the draw. Yeah, overall our draws are pretty underwhelming here. We do get attacked to this turn. Oof. That is not it. That's not it. Take 10. I think I'll allow that for now. We're going to get an attack next turn if I can't kill one of them this turn. Uh, corpse explosion, flying knee on the shield gremlin might do it. But then I have to re-kill the wizard next turn. I can't allow being attacked next turn. It's intolerable here. So I think we have to do it this way. Get attacked anyway. Bummer. Okay, so this is our ghost in a jar. Fair enough. Maybe draw a kill for the wizard next turn. This wizard will keep attacking every turn. Until killed. Pretty scary. Alright, I didn't love this fight, but we did beat the Burning Elite. We get an ornamental fan, giving us block if we play three attacks in one turn. And a bird face turn, healing us two whenever we play a power. Currently only one power in the deck. And we're offered a Blade Dance Plus with Ornamental Fan, Ink Bottle, and Vajra. That is a keeper. Still no potion. Uh-oh. That's spooky. Despite the fact that I don't have any potions, I think what I'm going to do is upgrade Adrenaline going into these next two elite fights. Just having one more energy on a crucial turn. I could also upgrade Terror or maybe Malaise, but just having one more energy on a crucial turn I think can make a really big difference for this elite fight here. Just need to hang on long enough. This is a really promising start, actually. Uh, if we can outmaneuver Malaise... We've got it. Start with Terror, actually. There's Adrenaline Plus. You'll love to see it. So we go Footwork, Defend, Strike, mal Out Maneuver. Defend Plus, that is. Come on, Malaise. Come on, Ink Bottle Draw Malaise. Dang it. But still, good enough. For this turn. We perfectly block this hit. Malaise on this turn would also be adequate, but we don't draw it either. Heck. Uh, we'll buffer this hit, that's fine. This would be 16 blocks. We still lose it. Do 16 damage or damage that changes per turn. Depending on how many turns this will take. I think we're just better off doing 16 immediately. Malaise, why were you so late? Demand an explanation for this heinous crime. Doesn't matter. Skewer's got us covered. Beautiful. Alright, Book of Stabbing defeated with... We actually gained health from the bird face turn. Great fight. We also gain a meal ticket and an old coin, both encouraging us to go to a shop post-haste and a calculated gamble to help make this deck feel a little bit smaller. Also, Energy Potion with our two X-Cost cards is going to be amazing here. We also get a boat thingy for block on turn two. This run is really starting to look up. The relic quality of this act has been spectacular. And uh, hopefully we're about to get two more, as long as this doesn't go too badly. With Corpse Explosion turn one, I'm thinking life is good. 
So what I'm going to do is Corpse Explosion the front one. I think I'd like to... It's going to be... Ideally, we would Corpse Explosion the middle one and kill the middle one this turn. But I think it's more likely that we cannot kill the middle one this turn. Uh, but we can block two hits if I kill the front one and the back one at the same time here. So let's start with that as a plan. So I think, what, Corpse Explosion Calculated Gamble? Looks pretty good to me. Maybe should have used Flying Knee. There's the Skewer. Perfect. Good fight. So that's why we ultimately took the Black Star, is that I saw because... Because of the cards that we had, we weren't going to have a difficult time with the Elites of Act 2, and so we might be able to get a whole bunch of relics with little opposition. That's exactly what happened. Now do we take a Piercing Whale? We should seriously consider it. Let's do it. I haven't been taking enough Piercing Whales lately. It feels like... Corpse Explosion's so good, though. Here, you be free as well. When your deck's only got three base energy per turn, I tend to value energy cost reduction upgrades very highly. Also gamble these away for more card draw. How cute. Let's do it. Car. Didn't matter. Second malaise. Cool. I don't think we've mastered malaise for one. For two, it's genuinely good. Again, with our outmaneuvers ability to generate energy and such. Love it. Absolutely love it. Gold for a card removal? Great deal, Cleric. We'd love to get some strikes out of this deck. And I'd love to spend some money. And I'd love to spend more money to the Pleading Vagrant. Give me a Relic, Vagrants. What do you got? A bag of preparation. Wait a minute. No! That actually doesn't do a dang thing. Because our hand one... Our turn one hand is already completely filled. So, that is completely wasted. Alas. Thinking about upgrading a malaise, though. Do it. My hand is full. I think I'd prefer to keep this terror for later. I can definitely make use of it here in this fight. If possible, we'd like to... use Buffer to block the Hyper Beam from Bronze Automaton, <clears throat> Bronze Automaton, but in practice that might not be allowed to occur. Ooh. Come on, come on, come on. Yes. Okay, all is relatively well. Let's explode this minion. We're going to block for 31. There's only 24 incoming. I'm going to remove this artifact then. Pow. So simply striking will remove 
both minions from the field, or they can just stay there dead. Uh, that means I can use the speed potion to keep the buffer for the hyper beam. That sounds like the simplest play. Let's do that. And then the strike doesn't actually matter. I actually don't want to put it here so that the malaises go into my hand when I do this. Strength down one applause. First blaze. The weak will. All right, so this gets buffered. Uh, and now we can start to figure out how to kill stuff. Proper like. Flying knee barely does any damage. Still, flying knee outmaneuver seems prudent here. Should have played the skewer. The one ink bottle. Yeah. Turns like this are going to be a bit of a problem, though. Just having some retain would go such a long way. end up dead pretty soon if we don't uh, start dishing out some damage here. Here's a dad joke for you, chat. Why is the bronze automaton a bad teacher? Because they don't have any pupils. This might have to be energy potion into skewer here. That helps a lot. Hyper beam happening very soon. Yeah, let's use this. We just have to do one damage next turn. Surely we can actually two damage. Yeah, we're there. Okay. Woo. Nice attack, Bronze Adomaton. GG. concern for this deck, but I think a burst could brighten it right up. Burst adrenaline, burst outmaneuver, burst malaise. Give me a runic pyramid. Please. Dang it. Well, we could remove cards, or we can get more energy per turn. Choker limits us to six cards per turn, which is miserable. Or Sozu means we can no longer gain potions, which is miserable. So, I'm going to remove two cards. Pushing chance back to 90%, by the way. <laughs> How? How did that happen? Hmm. Skip all the rest sites to do that. We can go a ton of events, no shops. We need to go to a shop, though. Bummer. Probably something like this. Rest sites are, as they say, for suckers. But I dearly would love to upgrade Burst. Hmm. Is it worth losing two relics to upgrade Burst? Probably not. Probably not. Explosion will finish this.
Oh, you're alive. Ah! My ink bottle set up. Wasted. Wasted, I say. Alright, that'll do. There's a potion for us, although not a particularly good potion. Stinky attacks I don't want. Glowing Tesseract, which I do want. Offering Panic Button, Panacea, Impatience. Double Impatience. Enlightenment. Apotheosis. I'll take that one. And if I have Apotheosis... Then Double Impatience seems kind of insane, actually. Also, that's two copies of an uncommon colorless card. What's the normal art for this? Oh yeah, this. I actually quite like the beta art for Impatience. There's only four attacks. One of them is Skewer, though, problematically. This one's going to be awkward. But... The others are... Uh, we'll remove this strike, and then the Neutralize and Masterful Stab should be mostly fine. Begin to fall, losing. Well, there goes the Masterful Stab. Never mind that one. One less attack of the deck. Exciting. Pot's pretty good, and I figure an Acrobatics Plus has to be as well, especially being able to discard an attack to make the Impatiences work. They don't really care that much about the upgrade status, but it's all right. Orange Pellets. If we play a power attack and a skill in one turn, remove all debuffs. Actually, hold up. What about Wing Boots with Black Star? We must look at the map. We could fight one... Currently, we're on a path to fight one, two, three elites. If we buy wing boots, we could fight one, jump over here, fight two. Two charges left. Jump over here, fight three, four, five. We get two extra elites for purchasing the wing boots. So four additional relics if I buy wing boots. Oh, there's another one over here. Ah, uh, but I can't do all six. Not possible. Can only do five. Yeah, jump once. Jump twice. Jump thrice. Yeah, we're out of charges for that last one. So we can't do six elites. But yes, we do get an extra rest site, which we could use to upgrade Apotheosis. That is important. Yeah, so we would jump here. That's what we're saying. Go one, two, second jump, three, Four, third jump, five. And that way we get the rest site also. Deal. And we can still buy the orange pellets. Hmm. 
Do I actually want a second orange pellet? Seems like footwork's pretty absurd. Could also remove another strike. Although we can do that at the final store. Oh yeah, we can also, instead of going left like this, immediately we can go fire elite, elite. Chad is right. Upgrade Apotheos is here. It is slightly better. So we'll have tons of money for the next time we see a shop. Pellets let me use certain potions really well, which we don't currently have. And maybe makes the heart more survivable, although quite frankly with malaise and buffer, I don't think I need orange pellets to block the heart. We also have double boat thingy protecting buffer turn one and turn two. So I'm pretty sure we're already perfecting first cycle heart, therefore this does nothing. Let's remove a strike. And I can still buy a footwork actually? Okay. I'll do that. Let's remove a strike and buy a footwork. And upgrade Apotheosis here. Save us an energy. And go here. To fight the Reptomancer. My hand is full. That's what they all say. We'll die this turn to Corpse Explosion. Let's do this. Hmm. Okay. So the Repto will attack us next turn. That's a little awkward. Hopefully we draw the Corpse Explosion so we can kill all the minions. That's going to be a yes. Yes, we do. Unfortunately, this one has slightly more health, so we'll have to use the Blade Dance. Yeah, now that we've gotten rid of all of the strikes, note that the, the empty cage really making a difference in how this deck feels. Big time. Make sure you redrew the corpse explosion there. Pretty glorious. Sometimes our turns are very weak indeed, though. Not good. Oh, baby. Lizard Tail, a second chance at life, always happy to see that. Whetstone will upgrade two attacks, mostly irrelevant with the Apotheosis, but still welcomed. Take a second outmaneuver. This deck is energy hungry, so I'm strongly considering it. I'm going to do it. When else are we going to get a chance to double outmaneuver, after all? The answer is never. We're never going to get another good chance for double outmaneuver to be a thing. So if it's not good here, it's not good anywhere. As they say. Care about Malaise versus Giant Head. Do we? Could burst impatience, but that's not what I'm looking to burst. I can 
burst out maneuver for the skewer next turn. Perfect. This giant head's gonna be very dead. Could double blade dance. I don't want to draw anything with the bottle, though. Double corpse explosion, single malaise. So we have 10 energy on this turn, plus adrenaline. I could burst malaise for minus 22 strength on Giant Head. That buys us some time. Nice countdown, nerd. But not 12 damage. Actually difficult to block. Hmm. I can't play the outmaneuver without sacrificing. Bummer. Draw the other one? Yeah, I figured. That's fine, though. We'll figure it out eventually. Rare easy pool giant head fight. Perfect. Nine additional energy next turn. Excellent. You'd love to see it. bottle stuff. 28 times 10. Pretty good. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> oh, man. Gary Spaceman says, you're my favorite overall content creator. Thank you for the entertaining and educational gameplay as always. You're heckin' welcome. That was an amazing giant head fight. Let's can bottle one of our powers. Just two footworks. I guess we'll bottle one of them. Gary Spaceman, thank you so much for the five generous gifted subs, along with a kind message. That is hankin' appreciated. Sticky Strike does damage, but... Eh. Second Skewer. Actually, this seems kind of good, right? Second Skewer. One, we don't have... Two Skewers crossed off the list, and two, we have two outmaneuvers, and... Yeah. Let's take it. Gremlin Horn's also quite excellent. Gotta take the blue key here. Alright, remember we've got three more elites to fight this act. Six more relics headed our way. Hopefully, it will be enough. If not, I really don't know what to do. before playing footwork. Definitely happy to have buffer here. Let's go with Outmaneuver Malaise. No flying me. 
HP bundle on 9. Alright, that makes us pretty safe. The multi-attacks from Nemesis will be for zero damage. And we have buffer for the big hit if it occurs. I can actually just outmaneuver over corpse explosion. Don't need to play blade dance here. Probably better to do the poison. This fight looks like it go on a, could go on a while. There's the big hit. Oh, my buffer. Oh. Oh no. Ouch. Not much I can do here. We can't kill because it's intangible. We can't block with no cards in hand. Not even the dupe bot does a dang thing. Ow. Oh. like that very much. This fight is far from over, too. Get a skewer next turn, should be enough. Centennial puzzles, good card draw. Thousand cuts. Hmm. Deflect is good. This deck wants zero cost cards. Yesterday. Especially ones that scale with dexterity. Deflect is what it, where it's at. I could actually... I could go to the shop if I'm willing to give up one of the elites. I don't think that's a wise choice. We should just heal off of our brute face turn. We'll be fine. Patiences are so nice. Okay, so we want to corpse explode the 60 health spiker. We want to get footwork in play. We want to avoid taking any damage here. Malaise for two does that. Seems good. Accuracy? No. Second blade dance might be a thing. Accuracy also healing for two would be nice. Oof. Can this deck deal with transient? Thankfully we have one buffer. That'll help. Seems like a pretty good start. 
not even going to use the adrenaline because we've already solved this turn. There's no point in having one really, really, really good turn against Transient. You need many kind of average turns for this fight. To nine. Good. This turn looks a little suspect. Looking a little bit better now. Let's take the impatience. Gambling. We're gonna backflip first. And again. And gamble. Nine. Try to get the adrenaline back in my hand. Actually, the deflect alone is enough, though. So we can keep the adrenaline once more. Try to get reshuffled here. Debuck, what is the transient's favorite drink? Spirits. Two turns left. You can do this one without needing to use the buffer, then we're free. Like sweet plus. Uh, with one energy, I guess if I play an outmaneuver, that's pretty good. Sure, I'll take one more. Might be a little too block heavy. I'm a bit worried. At least Gremlin Horn is here. The double outmaneuvers are definitely helping make this deck work. If it is going to work, I don't know if it is. I like the flex pot more than I like the ancient potion. Maybe I should have kept them together, but I like the duke pot too. All right, our last two elites, our last four relics here. Gremlin Horn going to make this Reptomancer no problem for us. This would be a good time to flex potion, quite frankly. Just solve Repto. But I'd rather just solve Spear and Shield, would I not? I would. Deliberately didn't play impatience there. Did not work out for me though. Okay. Do a bunch to Repto or kill one of them. Let's kill this one. Not my proudest turn, but it works. Uh, 
Okay, this is fine. Do this for two. So if we dash, then skewer, perfect. Dash here. Skewer here. Boop. Three energy, three draw. Thanks, Gremlin Horn. Uber and one malaise. Just keep making energy. This isn't exactly going to kill the heart very quickly, is it? We're going to need some thorns. Or some wraith forms. Now I regret not taking orange pellets. I guess escape plan is pretty good, too. For a energy starved deck with lots of skills. Sure. One more elite. Here goes nothing. Piercing whale gamble? Yeah, I could also dash, but I like whale gamble here. Show me Malay. Thank you. We want to use some of the energy from the outmaneuvers to keep paying for future outmaneuvers where possible. Let's just get a lot done. You won't trick me this time, Nemesis. I know your tricks. Think they're safe with the buffer, and then bam, burns galore. That's how you get us. And it works. That's the embarrassing part, it works. Here it comes. Oh, we're good. an egg so we can get a wraith form plus M maybe i'm hoping we get a caltrops plus in the final shop otherwise i really don't see how this is going to kill the heart though i do see how it's going to kill everything up to the heart which is actually pretty easily could almost want a quick slash plus that's how desperate for damage we are almost Explosion is going to make this fight relatively simple for us. Actually, just full block this way. Ornamental fan. Back later for you, Terror. Dash Malay's Impatience, or even Dash Impatience. Sure. Ooh, no sign of burst, sad. Here we 
go. Double corpse explode the donio. And double malaise too. Command for cards in the current run that could be mastered. No. An interesting idea, though. Hmm. It's just so hard to even play the outmaneuver in the first place on so little energy. Blocks with buffer, I guess. This is not going well, though. I just play the flying knee. Take one will actually draw his cards with a puzzle, and now we've got the artifact removed off deck out here. Here we go. So now I can actually afford to do stuff. GG, Donu and Deka. Slow fight, but a very successful one. Next up will be the Time Eater. This also shouldn't be too bad, in theory. You can do a lot of damage with relatively few cards. When the circumstances are correct. They want to get rid of these bleed. Shiv cards. Uh, we could Blade Dance again, but that's too many card plays. Playing cards will give Time Eater strength. We're looking to remove strength with Malaise, which we'll be very successful at. How's it going, Tim? Malaise for minus two. Tim, do any debuffs? Yes. Time Eater creates both Drawdown as well as Vulnerable, Weak, and Frail. Looking like a really good draw here, though. Yeah! My buffer will be gladly sacrificed for this. Burst, double Adrenaline, double Malaise. Minus 18 strength, Time Eater. Have fun. Alright, we definitely have to keep the slimes under control, though. Can't allow those to stay in the deck, or problems will ensue. Now we can just slowly whittle Time Eater's health down for a while. Nothing overly fancy required. Stop hurting my draws. 
stinky slug. We don't have as a second malaise now for when High Meter exits phase one. That's a bit of a problem. Only a little bit of a problem. The minus one card draw resets after two turns. That's the defining factor there. Let's, uh, let's see what we can do here. Might be able to bypass Time Eater's stupid nonsense by just killing them outright here. Although it's going to be really hard to draw a kill on this turn, so I doubt it. Indeed. So, time to resets all debuffs, all the minus strength is gone, all the vulnerable is gone. And it's just us versus the boss with 240 health. Gets the job done. Corpse Explosion will also help quite immensely here. This is not worth playing. Steady wins the race. Might be worth it to play Corpse Explosion here. We take a little bit of damage. We'll be healing to full in Act 4 with the meal ticket anyway. Yes, we should take a little bit here. Let's keep the poison going. Let's get the card draw off the Centennial Puzzle. Which helps keep us going as well. Definitely regretting not taking that bouncing flask we saw a long time ago. I think that might have helped a lot. GG, Tim. GG. Great fight. Really not that bad, all things considered. We're on to Act 4. We get both our potions intact. We have so very many relics. Stretching well into the second page here. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of all this blockening of this low and slow energy gain? Can we fix what the deck needs. Upgrading this footwork is reasonable. We could also get a card reward by resting with the Dreamcatcher. So we might want to consider doing that. We get the hit points anyway from meal ticket, but the card reward versus the upgrade is the question here. With Apotheosis, might be better to go card reward. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Let's look at some cards. Concentrate plus, Dagger Spray plus, huh? Concentrate plus. Let's try it. That's some energy. That is some energy right there. Paper Crane is here. 
accuracy is here. Paper crane helps us stay alive even longer, but doesn't help us kill a dang thing. Hmm. Third impatience is fun. We only have the one blade dance, so this accuracy is uh, struggling. But I'm pretty happy with uh, Paper Crane overall. We could also think about Frozen Eye, letting us know the exact draw order could really, really, really help, actually. You know what? Let's do this. That seems really important. And that does let me take the accuracy, which is helpful. All right, we're desperate. Let's do it. Frozen Eye, accuracy. Let's go. Letting me know what ink bottle is going to draw is particularly important, I think. Dash. I should, can I play 16 cards? I might be able to. That would only draw me to burst. Hmm. So next turn, I'm only drawing three cards. Hothiosis being somewhat far down is definitely an issue here. Hmm. No, we can't set up puzzle. The ornamental fan's gonna stop at any the uh, hit anyway. Lots of stuff going wrong there. One, two, three. Draw one, two. Draw one, two. Draw one, two. Okay, we can do some stuff. This might be a turn for the Flex Potion. We can get quite a bit of damage done here. We can uh, hit one... Uh, nine times currently, so an additional 45 damage with this Flex Potion. I'm not willing to use the Duplication Potion here. I think I need that for next fight. Seems likely to be better than next turn. Okay, so... Oops, explosion's pretty close to the bottom. Probably want to target the shield first. That's my usual instinct. I think it's going to be correct here. Might want to turn around and neutralize here, though. Draw one, two, three. Impatience draws one, two. Impatience draws one, two. Hmm. Not looking good next turn. Maybe I have to dupe Pod Piercing Whale. I don't like that though. Oh, we can burst the whale. Yeah, that would work too. Ink bottle's also coming in here. Patient straws one, two. So I can go defend, terror, burst, piercing whale, completely negate this hit. Then we can gamble. Draw these four. Play Adrenaline, play Apotheosis. Or er, not play Apotheosis. Play Footwork Out Maneuver, apparently. 
Sets up a malaise next turn. Probably going to be using buffer to block this hit next turn. It's a bit bad. We malaise for enough, though. This doesn't do any damage, and the buffer is reserved. Or used effectively. Corpse Explosion Skewer is next turn, so yeah, when he overlooks great here. This is going to have 99 block, though, so it's not that great. But it's still pretty great. Still full block if I skewer here? I think so. Yeah. So I need to backflip first so that escape plan would work. We can just double corpse explosion. Turn back around. This fight is over. Ori and some max health. And a heal hook, which genuinely seems pretty good for the hard fight. We're going to need a little bit of damage wherever we can get it. Although the beat of death will be annoying. The fact that this will be 12 damage every time we see it is yeah, definitely helpful. Bullet time any good? I don't think so. Doesn't work with X cost cards. We're looking to do outmaneuver things. We're energy star, but it doesn't really make actual energy for us. Because the heel hook kind of does. All right, Mr. Hart. This is going to be tough. Do you have a dupe pot? Okay, so what's the draw order here? Concentrate, Terror, Malaise, Accuracy are the top cards. Wow. Do we actually dupe Accuracy? Seems like we might need to. I can use Concentrate to discard these skewers so that the Impatiences can draw. In that case, I'd really prefer to not use the shivs yet. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Right? So what is this? Footwork? Impatience? Shiv? Acrobatics? No, that's not going to work out. Okay, forget being overly fancy then. Also ink bottles here to ruin my day. Slash make it better. I think I'd better play this footwork. Let's go footwork. Concentrate these two cards. Four energy left. Acrobatics, backflip, double accuracy, looks okay. Look at Calc Gamble that way. Yeah, Heart's going to add some cards to our deck, which could be certainly problematic here. Terror, double the accuracy, malaise for two, then we're guaranteed not to take damage in the next two turns. Guaranteed. Zero damage.
Don't play any more cards this turn, though. Multi-hit is first. We have buffer for next turn. Unfortunately... We don't get one dex, because Apotheosis is on the bottom here. Ooh, also, I won't be able to play any cards next turn. Oh, shoot. That's bad. The only way to do it is to use Ink Bottle this turn to discard the Apotheosis. So we have to skip Apotheosis. So that I can play Defend, then Adrenaline next turn. Bummer. But yeah, we, we basically have to do this. Draw the Apo here. Otherwise, we have to take this 64 damage attack because we don't have this defend. Such bad turns coming up. Okay, buffer's gone. Oh, we can draw three on this turn, though. That definitely helps. So I can burst out maneuver if I want to. Does that actually do anything? Kind of unclear. Can also burst the Blade Dance. Although, some of the cards will go into my Discord pile. Which I don't love. You definitely have to play the Blade Dance one time. Bursting Malaise isn't a good idea, as the heart's about to reset its strength. Like that I'd be able to use this though. I'm about to draw the Ascender's Bane with the ink bottle. That is good. Thankfully, the shivs are 25 damage each. It's gonna make our life a little easier. Maybe I just want to go flying knee out maneuver. We take less damage. I get a lot less energy, but I don't think I'm gonna need the energy from two out maneuvers. Let's do it like that. Hmm. Passable. Tori helps out here, that's true. Tori will continue to help out, because we can reset strength with the malaise. Just gotta watch out for this hit. This one's a bit of a problem. We should burst the leg sweep so we can reapply weaken here. But that means I can't play Blade Dance, though, and I think that's unacceptable. I think we have to burst Blade Dance this turn, even if it means taking a big hit here. We should be able to set up a nice outmaneuver malaise for the following turn. Yes, and the, the words of the sages we have to. Don't forget, we've got a lizard tail. We have health to spare. So it's a full 200 damage. Here we want to make sure we draw the malaise next turn. Although ideally we also want to remove the last artifact layer. I'm going to use the piercing whale now for that then. To remove this artifact layer so that the malaise will have a full effect next turn. 
Uh, let's see. I can impatience and backflip. So I can draw one, two, three, four, then one, two, three, four. Perfect. Yes, do that. Also, Beat of Death is about to become three, and that's going to be a real issue for us. Frozen Eye was a good purchase. So, here's where we would be absolutely straight dead if it weren't for Malaise. But with Malaise, we can turn this down to nothing. Looks like we want to. No, Patience won't draw without a heal hook being played, so we're not playing any of that. So, yeah, I think we go backflip. Apotheosis, Malaise. I wish I could Malaise for some and then Heal Hook and then Skewer. It's not how it works, though. So we need to we need to make sure we remove at least all four here. Ideally more than that. This will bring it all the way down to zero. Play this and not this. Take one. Hmm. Just for the ink bottle. That's a good draw. Do we need this damage? I don't think so. We need to get back to Blade Dance is what we need. It's all the way down here. Troubling. Next turn we can do Concentrate Skewer with Heal Hook. Might even be able to burst backflip? Um, do I need to sack some more health to deal damage here? Currently at 39 equivalent. I am allowed to play out maneuver here, although we'll die next turn with the thingy. Draw now and use the Concentrate now is also an option. Gonna miss out on the skewer. Yeah, that probably is better though. So next turn we should be able to burst the blade dance actually. Let's see, we start with Probably Survivor, then Heal Hook. Draw here, Impatience draws, one, two, three. Escape Plan draws the Blade Dance, Burst Blade Dance. But I'll have too many cards in my hand. Can't Burst the Blade Dance. Just regular Blade Dance, then. Easier to do that if I outmaneuver. Maybe then I can actually burst it for the full damage. So let's play this. Go down to very low health. Remember, we do have... Lizard Tail. Thank you, Tori. Uh, ideally, we want to block just enough so that we have like one health next turn to use the lizard tail with. That'd be the easiest way to do this. 
Uh, let's see, if I double defend, we go to 27 block. So we block 3 by 4, and then we take 7. Uh, 3 by 8, rather. And then we take 7. So we'll be at 1 health, exactly. And then we can just defend... Yeah, perfect, perfect. Don't mind all the wounds. Can't believe we drew Burst Blade Dance together again. That's pretty wild. Patience will draw one, two, three. Can I even do it now? Yeah. Better to be lucky than good, right, Twitch chat? And we both die with the final shiv. GG, Twitch chat. Be free, my lizard tail friend. Be free. What a run. Can't believe doubling the accuracy totally made the difference for that hard fight. Just one blade dance in a 35 card deck was all the damage. GG. Would we lose there without the lizard tail? Yes, that would be a death. So I'm really glad we had it. GG. Becker VG, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. What a wild run. 3606 is a mighty good score for a silent run. Just look at all those relics. Five elites in the final act. 1396 gold, nine perfect elites. Holy moly. GG. And some seriously fortunate burst timing. Guarantee there's no way I could have done that without the frozen eye. Frozen Eye was so important. Would have never had the patience. What about the impatience? What about the double impatience? Would you have had the double impatience to do that run? GG. GG. And we only spent six minutes actually looking at it. But there's, uh, there's one for the ages. We got double impatience. Crossed off. Double outmaneuver as well? T to win with double outmaneuver. Holy heck, that was not, not going to be an easy one, I thought. But here we are. And two malaise, two skewer. Brilliant, just brilliant. Boss Corgi, there's only one thing I can't deal with, and that's a deck of cards glued together. You know, I've recently been reading a book on adhesives. I literally can't put it down. But mind talking a little bit about the Black Star decision? Yeah, I'd love to. So we took Black Star because I was unafraid of the Elites of Act 3. Or, uh, sorry, unafraid of the Elites of Act 2. We saw that we had two forms of energy, both of which with, had pretty reasonable downsides. I said I didn't want Rink Dome because of the fossilized helix, uh, a buffer I wanted to be able to preserve. I didn't want the Fusion Hammer because I wanted to be able to get energy upgrades into this deck. Uh, although, uh, eventually finding Apotheosis, I don't don't feel too bad about it. But ultimately, what I was doing here was looking at the deck and looking for ways to defeat the Elites of Act 2. And I saw two important things. The first was Malaise. This is a answer to the Book of Stabbing. With Malaise in the deck, I'm not afraid of the book. We should be able to beat it without taking too much damage. We actually bottom drew the Malaise against the Book of Stabbing and still perfected the fight. The other thing I looked and saw was that we had lots of draw in turn one between the Ninja Scroll, the Ring of the Snake, and the Ink Bottle, as well as a Corpse Explosion. This is a confident answer towards the other two elites in Act 2. The three slavers, all we have to do is play Corpse Explosion and kill one of them, which is exactly what we did. Or the Gremlin Leader, where it can be used to kill the minions repeatedly, which is also what it did there. 
Turns out we still needed to use a potion to get a couple potions to get through the Gremlin Leader fight, um, but we managed to force our way through, and it worked out just fine. I also saw that I had outmaneuver in the deck, and so I knew that I had the beginnings of generating energy from my cards. We also had the uh, adrenaline, which helped a lot too. So between adrenaline, outmaneuver, malaise, corpse explosion, and the powerful interactions between all of those, right? With the outmaneuver, I can sometimes malaise for seven, and then the Book of Stabbing does nothing. I figured we'd be safe in most of the elite fights, and that ended up being mostly true. The heart painful stab, uh, Taneka, is something the heart has always done. It only gains painful stabs after buffing the third time. Usually, the painful stabs modifier does almost nothing, either because the fight has already concluded prior to the third buff, or because the heart will immediately kill the player with all the strength they gained from the third buff. So it's pretty rare that you have the heart fight go to the third buff and then take hits from the heart and then draw the wounds from the hits from the heart and have those matter. In fact, I'd, I'd say in thousands of runs of Slay the... Well, hundreds of runs of Slay the Spire, it's mattered maybe... Maybe one time. And then, yes, the fourth buff is 10 strength, and the fifth buff is 50 strength. So you're going to die very quickly anyway. Usually there's not even enough time to draw the wounds before the fight is over. Is this not the 4200th run? Anyway, that was a that was an amazing, amazing run. Started, of course, with an incredible relic. 273 damage prevented, according to the Helix. Seems like a lot. Eight per combat, better than burning blood. It's pretty telling. Really liked the empty cage, too. Dunking two strikes really, really made Act 3 feel quite comfortable. Minus 20 strength giant head was fun. Terwilliger, thanks for six months, the whole half year. So here's what I'm going to do, Twitch chat. First, I'm going to remind you all that you can support the stream and get yourself fresh food delivered to your front door if you live in the U.S. by signing up using my HelloFresh promotional link here. Exclamation point. HelloFresh. Pog HF86607. I see that seven people have already used the code, and big thank yous to those who have. Codes should be live for a whole month. So there should be plenty of time to redeem them. Before we go any further in today's stream, I'm going to take a quick break here, refill the legs, stretch the water, grab a quick snack. Upon my return, I'd like to switch things up and play a bit of Monster Train today. Get, a, get another win or two in that game. We haven't visited Monster Train in a little bit. Oh, let me also mark this run. Marker double. Close enough. Frozen Eye was from the shop. That's right. Frozen Eye is a shop-only relic. But we bought in the final store, and I think it was a very good idea. Frozen Eye Accuracy Plus. Given the way that heart fight played out, I think we can we can retroactively see those were really good choices that we made in the store. They worked out perfectly. So, too, did the decision to keep the duplication potion. When we could have used it during the boss gauntlet uh, or the shield and spear fight, we decided that dupe pot was going to be important. Duping the accuracy was the way we won. It's pretty cool. Made you reinstall Monster Train? Good. It's a fun game. All right, folks, I'll be back in a few minutes. When I return, we'll be switching games. Don't go nowhere.
Alrighty, Twitch chat, thank you so much for being patient there. It's time to switch games. Choo choo. PR squared, why should you never trust a train? Because they have loco motives. An eggplant cutlet sandwich. It's quite a treat. Quite a treat indeed. Welcome back, everybody, to Monster Train. A delightful deck building roguelite experience, similar to, but also entirely unlike, Slay the Spire. Monster Train is a game of defense. Uh, pyre defense, I suppose. You can kind of think of it like tower defense. You have to fend off waves of enemies that are climbing towards your vulnerable point. You must use cards and units to stop them from ascending. Like Monster Train, er, like Slay the Spire, rather, this game has an ascending difficulty level system called Covenants. Similar to the Ascensions of Slay the Spire, the Covenants are uh, totally, uh, all total 25 different small penalties that stack together to give you a really hard time on your run. Main ones to keep in mind are multiple copies of Deadweight added to our starting deck, an unremovable curse that does nothing, starting with lower health and a penalty in the form of Ember Drain if we try to play a unit on the top floor. Pretty skill-based game this is, especially with the Last Divinity DLC added. I'll do my best to explain our decision-making as we go. Definitely got an unusual combination of clans here, Awoken plus Melting Remnant. The Melting Remnant are all about short-lived, reformable units. The Awoken are about healing and enduring and creating big units often. Um, so these regen, these restore cards might be completely useless to us initially, unfortunately. Akmu, thanks for eight months of support. Heck yeah. So units with burnout only live a certain number of turns. When burnout runs out, the unit dies. But the units can then be reformed once dead to be used again. These two vine grasps are not bad. And the Memento Mori will deal damage based on how many of our own units have died. With so many self-sacrificing units, this might just work out. Yeah, I imagine these restores are probably not going to be welcome in the deck for long. We can purge them all, that'd be good. Let's see what our champ options are. I was hoping we'd see Dark Calling Rector Flicker. We don't currently have a way to reform units, but this would work. Each turn, we reform two units at random and give them even more bonus damage. That's great. We could also go with the Burn Bright variant. This version of our champion has really high base stats, but only lasts for a few turns, meaning you won't be able to use them against the boss unless you can reform them. So you need to have a different boss solution in play. Let's go Dark Calling. I think this is one of the better versions of Rector Flicker and really does form the foundation of play for the Remnant. I'm also thrilled to see an early Capricious Reflection. Everything starts with one free unit, uh, one free upgrade, which can be good or bad, but uh, it is definitely fun. Don't think I'm going to take this 100 gold. In the Last Divinity DLC, we have to pick up packed shards along the way. We need 100 in order to face the true final boss, kind of like getting the three keys going to the heart and slay the spire. Thing is, though, with packed shards, you get pack shards, which also make enemies stronger, at the same time as you get a bonus of some kind. So here we can get 100 gold 
and take 10 shards. So we get 100 gold and enemies get stronger. It's uh, not always worth it. Generally think that uh, taking the artifact for shards is, is always worth it, but the money, not so. The gold is quite safe for the first fight, it's true. Um, but it doesn't mean that we need it. Relic can definitely, if it, if it whiffs, can be bad, but I'll still fall for it every time. Such a sucker for it. So with this form of Rector Flicker, there's two main places to deploy, as far as I'm concerned. You can play Rector Flicker on the top floor to keep them safe. Um... Or you can play them on the bottom to be more aggressive with your reforms. Combat resolves from top to bottom for the floors. So if you play Rector Flicker on top, they won't be able to reform units killed on floors below them. But they can reform on the same turn, units that die either in the same room or on floors above. And we might want to consider doing that here. Let's see how that goes for us. Let we'll the train steward get killed. The disciple protector does four, then the foot soldier does nine. So we can have the drag attack back. Or we could get the drag killed immediately and have it be reformed as well. Let's do that. I want some immediate reforms here. And we'll put this train steward on the next floor up. So both of our units will die, but they'll both be immediately reformed into our hands. Like so. That gives them a bonus to their stats as well as a cost reduction. We also now on turn two see the presence of the collector. Kind of a cherub-like creature. You have to kill them. They always appear on the second turn of each combat each non-Mazer boss combat. And if you can kill them, you'll gain bonus dollars. I do see a way to kill this. We do drag, drag, drag. can make it work. <clears throat> and that leaves me a lot of stuff to do down here as well. This entombed explosive plate in front will kill the Forged Disciple nice and cleanly. Looks like we'll have to get our friend hit one time, though. I love that part. Our champ, that is. We got collector is killed. Oh, this has 13 health. Perfect. There we go. Champ doesn't have to take any hits. So we'll lose this train steward, this entombed explosive, and this train steward, and Rector Flicker will reform two of them again immediately. And then we have another turn before the boss arrives. We'll let this one burn out. These will also burn out and can be reformed by Rector Flicker. Nothing else we can do here really matters much. I don't want to put this train steward down because I want to leave room for reformed units to be played. We're going to get... Specifically, the Entombed Explosive, well, and then two out of the four. Yeah, we're, we'll be fine. Train Stewards are always in your deck. Yeah, they're, they're essentially the strike of Monster Train. You start with four of them on every run. And that's enough damage to kill the boss. We can also snipe the backliner with the vine grass to further improve this. This is already working out perfectly, though. Bop. 
And that's the first fight beaten pretty capably here, even though we have a, a lot of units that I think are not so good. There are a lot of cards that are not so good. The restore is going pretty well. Get some really interesting options here. Double stack hollow drippings. Extend the burnout timer by 10 on any burnout units. Very curious. Drip fall for free to send a unit and apply dazed one. You can use this to overstack a floor or to remove opponents strategically. An entombed explosive with big stats is also kind of interesting. Has a large stone, so takes additional space up on the floor. I think I'm going to take the drip fall, but all of these are very curious. Permafrost Steel Enhancer. Ooh, cost reduced focused growth. Restore 25 health, draw two more cards next turn. I like that one quite a lot with a discount. Sure. Just for the card draw, if nothing else. A, parinfor a paraffin enforcer with the burnout uh, stone. Interesting. On striking, applies rage to friendly burnout units. Which does include itself, interestingly. Battlestone Huskermit is just a nice sweep attacker. Can hit backline units pretty well, pretty tanky too. Nothing wrong with it. I want to try to make this Paraffin Enforcer work. Let's see what we can do here. And in situations such as these, I recommend getting a fully upgraded, maybe even an infused unit, although we don't have a Divine Temple for a while. Getting at least a, a, an upgraded banner unit pretty quickly. You can either go to the Merchant of Magic or the Merchant of Steel. Both offer upgrades of various kinds. In Monster Train, every card has two upgrade slots, and any kind of upgrade can be put into that. There's, I think, eight different kinds for both spells and units. Plus some special ones found only in events. The best essence in the game, they say. I don't know if I would agree with that. Always recommend looking at the merchant before you check out the banner unit. That way we can know that we have a large stone available to use on whatever this is. Paraffin Enforcer. Well, well, well. Wickless Tycoon could be fun, too. Gains money when a unit on its floor dies. Friendly or enemy. Could be quite powerful. And I rather dig the idea of a Paraffin Enforcer infused into itself. Sure. And ideally, we'd like multi-strike to make that work. I don't really want a large stone, huh? Could also just have the two paraffin enforcers. Nothing wrong with that. Endless would also be great for one of these entombed explosives, so we'll pay for a reroll here. Multi-strike. Perfect. We take the money, use that to buy multi-strike. I'm going to put it on the one with burnout. So that way it buffs all burnout units, including itself, with each of its hits. I like it. Should be pretty nutty. And we can apply the hearthstone and strength stone to things too, if we wish. It's nice having one tanky train steward, actually. I've, I've come to enjoy that. And we've got many of other many other good things to remove on this run. Tanky drag might even be better. Let's do tanky drag. Tanky buffed drag. Better stats. You'll love to see it.
Yeah, with Capricious Reflection, I'd love to look at another unit draft. Giving enemies armor 10 could be problematic. But how problematic can it really be? If the Paraffin Enforcer goes before the Dreg, the Dreg will do bonus damage. And we can stun this fool? Okay, I'll set up on the bottom again. Let's see if I regret this. That's getting away. Not much I can do about that. Rage does not carry over on reform, no. So we're starting from a blank slate each time, but still pretty good. Hmm. So this is going to get reformed. Probably want to play that over a drag. Okay. Spiker, no spiker. Unfortunately, that wastes some of the entombed explosives power. I think that's okay, though. Do 165 damage to the boss. We should be able to finish the boss off with... Something? Got another entombed explosive. That'll help. Having short-lived units can really be a problem for Melting Remnant, though. Because it can be really difficult to get your, uh, your attack damage to add up to enough of the boss's health. But this looks sufficient. One explosive thing, one train steward, get him. Boop. Get hit with a stick. Oh, holdover reform or a multi-strike graph. What a choice. Wow. That is tough. I think I'd better take this draft, since we have the ability to give it such powerful multi-strike. But that is a really tough choice. Holdover meaning when you play it, it goes back on top of the deck next turn. So, holdover cards can be played once per turn. Meh. Meh. Hmm. Oh, a Vine Mother! Spikes three on resolve, add a sting spell to your hand. Neat. Vine Mother's a rare unit, very difficult to get uh, mastery done on. So we're gonna grab Vine Mother here. What's your essence? Summon, add three sting. Oh, summon? Interesting. Be fun to uh, infuse into something that reforms.
Ever understood how burnout works? You can think of it as a number of turns to live counter. When burnout reaches zero, the unit dies. That can be a good thing, though, because Melting Remnant. X cost cards get plus three. Hmm. We don't have any of those, but we certainly could get one. Jack Strips is pretty weak overall. This is the Awoken Clan, right? One of the X cost cards is very, very good. Let's take it. And I'll pay 15 shards for this, too. Resin block is pretty huge. When a friendly unit dies, apply plus 10. Encased Ember, 5 energy when a tomb unit dies, also pretty powerful. Man. Although we don't have a lot of ways to use that. Or Emblem of the Exiles to gain health. So, health, energy, or damage. We're definitely getting one. Feels like resin block's got to be our best bet at the moment. My favorite faction combo is uh, Wormkin plus Stygian, and then ignore units entirely and just cast spells. Four hundred damage spells. Trap shoot, send a unit to the bottom floor and daze it, or steel polyclaw, send an enemy unit to the pyre room and daze it for three. Like the Polyclaw, it can help us remove problematic backline units, although its two cost is a bit ish bit of an issue. It's a cool little event there. Daedalus, the Professor. Summoning bombs each turn is a little annoying. We want to put the damage dealers on the bottom here. Looks like a good start. I can put these two in the middle. I don't have to go top. Sure. Generating one sting each turn means we get to do 10 damage to a front unit somewhere and increases our draw per turn, which is rather nice. That's a big lad. Hello. Here, have some super burnout. Damage. Stuff. Won't do any harm if it gets to the top. Not a problem. We can put more burnout units here. Might as well. Actually, they should go behind this guy to do more damage. Definitely feels like we probably want to take more capacity as our bonus from this first boss. Normally I'm looking to take either card draw or energy, but being able to fit more units on each floor looks premium at the moment. Truly premium.
Do some damage up top. Might as well. Yoink. Order there. Gotta remember to put the little guys behind the enforcers. Surprisingly difficult to do. that. Look at that draft. 30 times 3 attack power. You just put it behind the enforcer and the results speak for themselves. Easy. So each time Paraffin Enforcer attacks, it applies Rage 3 to friendly burnout units, all the units behind it. Each stack of Rage makes each of their attacks do two more damage, so plus six to all friendly units per attack of the Paraffin Enforcer. The power. Ooh, zero cost channel song. Draw a unit and give it plus 20, plus 20. Normally you draw all your units early in a fight, but this deck has tons of units and would very easily be able to take advantage of this. I don't get to choose the unit, I don't think, but I'll take a channel song here. Also a fun opportunity for ch Shard Channeler. It's got multi-strike and makes friendly units do more spike damage. Odd. But yeah, let's take Channel Song. We're probably going to dupe this draft, so... Heck yeah. An Animus of Will with multi-strike. 3x4 and 3. This is another really, really good reformable unit. What if we infuse the draft into the Animus of Will? Then it'll be multi-strike... Four. Burnout. Holy crap. And yeah, give me more capacity. We're gonna strike so many times, you wish I hadn't struck so many times. I think getting removes is pretty important here. We do not like these restores or the train stewards. So there are nine completely useless cards in this deck. And the faster I can get rid of all of them, the better. We can fuse our paraffin enforcers together here if we wish to. Wait, what if I put Paraffin Enforcer into Animus, actually? Yeah, then the Animus of Will is attacking four times and applying Rage with each of them. Oh my. Oh my. That is pretty ridiculous, is it not? It is. And we can look at a Merchant of Steel next floor for maybe another Multi-Strike or something. Yeah, that's that's hype. More money here is also tempting. No, we'll go this way. Intrinsic? Yeah, cool. Double stack. Dazed six. Um, let's see what these are. An endless animus of will. Hm. Doesn't seem good. 
Thorn Hollow's a bit big, too. I'll skip these two. Have a nice one, Shalikor. Wait, does it work with the trinket? Hmm. Hmm. So we make Channel Song intrinsic, so we can always get a unit with plus, plus, plus 20, plus 20 on turn one. That's going to be good. Don't really want to put magic power into anything, though. And we are going to infuse you... into you. So now with each attack, Rage 3 is applied to all friendly burnout units, including itself. So each attack in the four-hit combo is m bigger than the last. Sharp. Also going to cut two... Rest uh, let's get Train Steward, Train Steward gone first. Actually, one Train Steward, one Restore. Maybe in equal measure? Doesn't matter that much. We'll never get more than Reform 2. We could switch over to Harvest Rector Flicker so that we could have some stat scaling on our champ here. Or we can just improve the buff provided to the Reformed units, which seems like what I want to do. Go further down the Dark Calling line. So do we want any of these upgrades? Hmm. Emberstone's good, at least on their focused growth here. I think I want to keep the rest of the money for... Upgrades here at this Merchant of Steel, so we can buy Endless or Multi-Strike. It might be true that we want to get Stewards out quickly. can't remember if Channel Song lets me choose. That's why I didn't prioritize. We're going to find out in a moment. Oh, I fall for this every time, giving the Multi-Strike. I love Random Artifact, but giving enemies Multi-Strike, especially when you have a high shard count, is a bad idea. I am not going to go seal of regression here. I think this could be an easy way to lose the run. Or not a lot of gain. The rings 4 and 5 tend to be the hardest. The ones I'll skip most often. 13 available. Yeah, we just get one, which is apparently the draft. Wow, what a chonker. You get him, draft. We're definitely going to go rector flicker on bottom with a setup like that. Heck yeah. Also, these enemies get stronger as they go up floors, so setting up bottom will help with that as well. Did. Yeah! Put these together. Forget forget this draft for the moment. Do this. Behold the power. You two can go up top here. The Rage. 31 times 4 and climbing rapidly. They're going to both burn out, and guess what? They'll be reformed immediately. The power. Yes. 80 times 3. Wow. I 
Unfortunately, we only get one round of them being alive, though. Time timing the burnout correctly is tough. Do that, I suppose. Alright, stun the boss. Get rid of this stupid minion. That looks a little bit better. Definitely... Would have preferred to be able to put other units other than this train steward up top. We can do this, though. Kill this thing. Place a new one. Kill it again. Oh, I can't kill it. Heal it. Good fire. GG. Hold over Memento Mori. Ooh, or a consume, retain, reform to at random. This is amazing. Since we're currently struggling to get enough reform. Perfect. And zero cost, draw three more next turn. Yes. Seems pretty free to me. And now to the Merchant of Steel. And yes, we're going to remove train stewards preferentially now. Now that I've seen what they can do to me. Large stone, huh? Hmm. So I think what I'm going to do is infuse the draft into the Paraffin Enforcer. Or maybe we could even infuse a Dreg into the Paraffin Enforcer or the draft. Those are both quite reasonable. Maybe a lot of shard counts, but this... Clan doesn't mind shard count that much. you do some damage. Endless. Okay. That answers that question. Could actually make the draft endless. That way it'll only ever have burnout one, dies at the end of every turn, gets resin block at the end of every turn, but I have to pay the one energy to play it every turn. Can't ever benefit from rage stacking either, but it's deployable anywhere uh, each turn to kill exactly what I needed to kill. I like that quite a lot. Let's do that. Do we get another Merchant of Steel leader? Hellvent coming up. Or Merchant of Magic. Merchant of Steel if I don't want this, which I probably do. Merchant of Steel at the very end. Okay, we can leave the other upgrade slot on the paraffin at uh, the Animus of Will unfulfilled if we wish to. What I'm seeing here. Um, that means I don't think we don't infuse anything into this draft, although we could actually infuse the entombed explosive into the draft so that we're doing an additional bonus 50 damage every time it does the thing. Seems pretty cool, actually. Sure. Minus two cost on a spell. Memento Mori might be pretty good to upgrade like that, too. Although that's a lot of shards paid out. This is a weird unit. Great duplication, though.
Yeah, especially if we add Pierce to it. Although that's maybe too many shards. So I don't want to pay 25 shards just to make one card better. Seems like a bad deal. Uh, but what is a good deal is removing another card. The last train steward. And I do have enough for one more purge, if I wish. Am I helmeting? I could dupe the draft. That's pretty tempting. Think about it. So the downside of using shards, the more shards you have, the more powerful your opponents become, is the main downside. So many times you'll see enemies that are physically larger and have this kind of crystalline purple sheen. That's an enemy that's been upgraded into a more powerful version because of our shard count. And when they say more powerful, they're not kidding. These, uh, these super-powered Masters of Light have 150 health and have sweep, which makes them true problems. Some of the super-powered enemies, especially again in rings 4 and 5, can be real run-enders. 2020 Entombed Explosive. Sure. Giving them all armor is definitely a rector flicker on the bottom sort of situation. They're not even dying. How embarrassing. We're going to draw this next turn. I'd like to be able to play on the bottom, so don't play the drag there to play it here. These ones are also quite tough, the super powerful Clipped Guardians be a real problem. Dazed three. So Steel Pulley Claw deals with this Master of Light, and then the Quill Marksman's easily dispatched. Let's do that. Down here... Hmm... Why don't you perish so that you can be reformed immediately? I don't know I was going to draw the Animus next turn. It's a feature of Monster Train called uh, Priority Draw. Essentially, you're guaranteed to get one of your unit cards every turn. You'll notice that we always, on turn one, draw one of our upgraded units. Um, and then we'll continue to do that at a rate of at minimum one per turn until we've seen them all one time. Thing is, not all units count for this. Only units that we've added from unit banners or unit drafts post-combat. So essentially not the common units of the run. So for this one, that is the Animus of Will, the Paraffin Enforcer, and the Vine Mother. If we, we'll get a guaranteed minimum of one of those each turn for the first few turns of combat. Monster Train never explicitly states this outright, really anywhere, so I wouldn't fault you for being unaware of it. Have some damage. Have some big damage. Easy. 
But the draft is not guaranteed to get drawn at all, so it can be quite a while till we see them sometimes. Beautiful. And again, no draft is not a banner unit. Which can make relying on draft uh, a little bit of a risky proposition sometimes. That's good. Play this for the card draw. Excellent. This boss has sweep, meaning they attack everything at the same time. That means the NFs of Will is killed instantly. Oof. That's not good. That is not good. Hmm. That is very bad. Am I dead? Maybe. Yeah, we need the days, right? Hmm. We have it next turn. Uh, so I think that what we means is what that means is we play up here, knowing that we are going to draw the days next turn. Let's do that. Keep the sacred wicks for the moment. The sacred wicks. Super boss, definitely very challenging for us here. see. One daze is going to mean a lot of damage that we can do, thankfully. Minus 230 from this, and we can deploy more units here. Sacred Wicks say... We can get quite a bit. We do get Rector Flicker with Burnout 1. Will Rector Flicker do the thing? That's my question. Kind of unclear. Oh, well, you actually just win. What? Show me the math on that. Holy rage. Dang. The power. Kill a random non-boss enemy unit. Kill a random friendly unit. Sometimes that's great, actually. Remove all buffs from... Enemies and debuffs from friendlies could also be nice. It's like a crushing demise. Being able to kill units is quite nice. Although often we want specific units to stay alive, huh? Hmm. Got permafrost. Definitely take it. Second channel song. Maybe. Never had a double channel song run before. Let's try it. Burnout is not a debuff, no. There is a different card that will specifically remove Burnout, though. So what do I think? Merchant of Magic, Concealed Caverns, and a Relic, or dupe a card? I think I just want to remove cards. So take the other stuff. Take the other stuff. Friendly units do five more damage. Seems fine. Can add Holdover to something. Spellwise, Holdover Crushing Demise, Holdover Dripfall. Holdover Dripfall seems quite good, actually. Do Holdover Dripfall. That can stop Last Divinity and some other things. You 
need to be cheaper. So we're mostly here to purge cards. Spell chain. Spell chain on the sacred wick so that we can again reform two at random. Yes, that's huge. That's huge. And we are going to fuse two units again. Don't have anything for the paraffin enforcer. I think we just want to put a uh, drag into paraffin enforcer. It removes one drag and buffs the unit both at the same time. Simple but effective. Extends the burnout too, which may or may not be a good thing depending on one's perspective. Shards of the Pyre. Do you take a swig? Sip with caution to upgrade a unit with plus 10 or take one of these cards. We've already mastered them both. They are both X cost cards, so we do get the benefit of the first Hell Pact. Kind of cute. Up that giraffe. Not that it's allowed to have a third unit upgrade, if given an upgrade in this manner. How's it going, Chrono? Thank you so much for 52 months. Good to see ya. So, Arcus, the Simon Says of Monster Train. Arcus is constantly summoning these dark shards, and each one is essentially forbidding a certain action on a certain floor. In this case, it's forbidding deploying new units onto this middle floor. If we do, the units we deploy will be dazed. Reeling, about to break. All right, let's try not putting Rector Flicker on the bottom this time and see how that goes. I think you can, you can go above four upgrades. I don't see any reason you wouldn't be able to do five. It's allowed. This vine mother goes up here. Why not? Have some card draw. Give me the draft. The power. 45 by 325. What a champion. And it's free now. Oh, a beautiful, beautiful thing. Simply beautiful. I right, don't want to play that. Lots of stuff we don't even need or want to play. No playing spells, they said.
the regioning begin. I yeah, probably should have put uh, Vine Mother in front. I'm not sure why I did the other way around there. Call it a brain fart. Oof. Ten for days. Final wave. Stealth. A little annoying. Only one unit available to get back. That is mostly fine. Pro tip, don't use Steel Polyclaw on a boss. You will regret it. No stealth on the boss. Now we can do whatever we want, more or less. Thirty-four attack power. Look at all that damage output. Absolutely ludicrous. 105 times 3. Heck yeah. The power. 99 damage drag. So angry. GG. Hollowed halls, kill friendly units, and then reform random units to this floor until it exceeds its capacity. Essentially, accelerate scaling, particularly with the resin block, on every unit on a floor. Heck yeah. Give me hollowed halls. And I think it's time for more regular card draw. Capacity seems under control. We're going to remove some more of these useless things that we don't want. Why don't we further improve our draw each turn to really tie the whole thing together? I don't feel like we're going to need more energy. Unnecessary, he says. Just more removes. We have... Or restores still, and I don't even want all the dregs we have, so more removes, more better, as far as I'm concerned. Less cards, more card draw. Meet somewhere in the middle. There's the energy we want. Hell's Banners. When we summon the second unit during our turn, gain three ember. So that's three ember per turn, period. Excellent. All the ember we'll ever need. Could take Combustible Wax. Our burnout lasts much longer. Although that's actually a downside for units like the Endless Draft. So I don't think so. But yes to Hell's Banners. That's all the energy we'll ever need. Yes to... Do we fuse two units again? I don't think so. None of these upgrades are that good anyway. 
Go full dark calling, get an additional plus 15 to the reformed units. Yeah, combustible wax can be can be bad. But it can also be really good. Get a heart stone. Or all units get 10 more health and cannot be healed. Ooh. I do have healing with focus growth. Let's just add 25 health to a unit of our choosing. The draft can have four upgrades. Why not, right? Now let's make the paraffin enforcer tankier. Onwards. Spikes five. 400 gold is super worth it. I think spikes will not be so bad because even if our units die, they'll just get reformed. Onwards and downwards. Kerpow. Tricky enemies here. Oh, right now, that doesn't do what I thought it was going to do. Well, that's fine. It's the extinguish damage. We're to account for this. The chain reaction, though. That's great. Everyone dies. That extinguish. Brilliant. Get to reform the entombed explosive too. But yes, it can't be reformed because it was an endless creature. So it never went to the rule of things that are dead. That's fine. Two different dregs. Okay. It is what it is. Spikes mean I don't really want to use the steel pulley claw on any of these units. I can avoid it. Oh, right, that's just giving them more armor. Whoops. I don't really love that. Hmm. All right, I'll take 10 fire damage. Get this thing out of here. Kill a random enemy unit. Good choice. Wiped out. Looks 
okay. Four dead units, so we definitely want to reform this turn. Definitely. Or we could just hallowed halls, even better. It's gonna give the enemies some armor, but it's also gonna give us some mega stuff. Yeah, and they're wiped. Easy peasy. though. Here, you are too big. Go down, please. Also die. Good talk. Yes, the endless the endless draft is getting the reform buff from the resin block every time it dies. It's because of the resin block, specifically, that the draft is getting plus 10 per turn. This Hollowed Heart calls an expansion card. Yes. That's the remnant card I added with the last Divinity DLC. Yes, it is. A hundred damage entombed explosive, apparently. Make more stuff. Oh, there's nothing left. 210 damage. Huzzah. Go wild. Wow, that's a lot of damage. Beautiful. Another reform two at random feels almost unnecessary. Do we want to be able to purge buffs from enemies? That could be rather nice. Targeted reform with Wicked Blaze, also pretty okay here. Let's take the buff purge. Resin removal. No, no, and no. And here for the final floor, we will take the Hellvent. I would like to dupe one of our units. Maybe we'll dupe the Animus of Will with the last upgrade in it. Let's see what our options are here. Quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a winner. Make it quick. And make it double. Seems good to me. Uh, what else we got? Could have put more spikes on the Vine Mother, but now there's not much left to do. I think we're mostly going to pay for card purges unless we see artifacts that are worth our endeavor here. Sting spells get 20 magic power. That's not too bad. Friendly units gain Rage 3 when they lose a stack of Burnout. Fade's First Blade. There's a specific card that works really well with Fade's First Blade. That removes all burnout. We're not really getting much out of the Fade's Blade. I think I would prefer Channel Heart if I was going to spend money on one of these two things. And I don't even prefer Channel Heart. I prefer uh, Card Purges. And not much else. So I'll pay an escalating amount of money for several Purges here. this one.
Played as well. Sure, you're tanky now. All right, good talk. Seraph the Digilent. Diligent, excuse me. Applies Consume to the first spell card we play each turn. That's actually a good thing, because we have Vine Mother making one sting per turn. I'd actually really like to get rid of those. Raven3010, thanks for 26 moons of support. Heck yeah. Dang it, Channel Song. You were supposed to be better than this. All right, not a great turn one here. So we can remove both the stealth and the spell shield from Seraph here with resin removal. That's a pretty powerful effect. Plenty of energy. We have to stop these units from adding curses to our draw pile here. That's easier to do here. Oh, we can actually use the steel polyclaw to kill this one. That's right. That's right. But you're actually not dying. Hmm. There we go. Good. So, no curses then. Yoink. Perfect. Zoom. Let's put those two together for the moment. You can go down here. 20 damage, really? That's it? Hmm. Could be to have done more. If we stun this thing, it can't give us a curse. Let's see what cards available with Channel Song, huh? Bummer. really keep that middle row damage high. Shouldn't be hard. Nice. Get rid of this. Now, if Seraph goes to the top floor, we can just send him down to the middle again, and he'll be extremely vulnerable to the double animus of will here. Check this out. 998 damage being dealt, and we can do better than that. Oh boy, can we ever. Until it exceeds its capacity, they said. Go! 
perfect. Although resetting the rage actually means they do less damage this turn. Funnily enough. Cute. Should have played the sting first because of the consume seraph. Not worried about it overall, though. But yes, I should have. Great turn. Tend to the front now. Right, play Sting first. Although, arguably, I want to play this first. No, we're good. Yes, to the middle, you fool. Thousand damage to your face. And then some. This is exactly 150 damage. This is exactly three damage. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. GG. Seraph killed everything. Single-handedly. Ah, we're good. GG. Beep. Death by Vine Grasp. What a way to go. What a way to go. Alright, well this Reform-centric deck has been wildly successful thus far. Can we keep things together against the last divinity here, though? This boss could be a particular challenge for the Melting Remnant, I've found. Divinity exists on all three floors simultaneously, with each floor having a different property. The bottom has Trample. Overkill damage applies to the next unit in line. Middle floor hits twice, and the top floor has Sweep, hitting all your units at the same time. These are in can't right now, Slay. Man, these channel songs have not been good, unfortunately. Would have been really nice to get the other Animus of Will, but here we are. At least we got Sacred Wicks on turn one. So we go what? Entombed Explosive, Animus of Will, Drag, and just Hollowed Halls down here? Seems reasonable. And we'll put uh, Rector Flicker up top. He's got enough health to survive for five turns. And we've got a heal thing, so that should be fine with the focus growth. Yeah, he'll be fine. So boss have 3,900 health in total or each floor? In total. Each floor has different buffs and debuffs and a different offensive value, but their health is shared between the three of them. Great question. Nice ordering. Beautiful. The bottom floor gets wiped out.
Having a strong bottom floor that can wipe out the units as they come in so that other units on the top and middle floor can damage Divinity each turn is uh, definitely a way to get ahead in this fight. Big time. There's the focus growth. You need to perish. Could use Crushing Demise here. It's got Retain, though, so let's not. I did to Spike, because I should have put you behind. Oh, well. This is fine. This floor is a really tough one. Two overcharged tanks give armor to all units and any time anything on this floor dies. So that can make a big problem. Spike's also preventing some what of a problem here. Tempted to use the crushing demise here. Not yet. We want to save this for the mini boss, actually, which will be coming in soon. Those are problematic. Spikes. Let's we'll get some stuff in here. I can do damage. Not much, but some. Look at their power. our highest score. We've had an 80,000 point run on stream before. That was a good time. So this guy, this is a non-boss enemy, technically. Blah. Easy. Easy. Here, stun this one. Get more time up here. They should just get overkilled. Fair enough. No buffs to clear, doesn't matter. All right, so we're missing a few units. No biggie, no biggie. This would be a good turn to reform them at random. Send this Gilded Wing to the top and not deal with it. Take a little bit of pyre damage, save myself quite a bit of health. Uh, I want to keep dazing the top, though. Keep these two alive. Nine hundred damage being dealt here. Can do better than that, surely. Or we could just add two drags to massively benefit from their attacks. I mean, you'll massively benefit from their attacks. Get in there, buddy. 
That was some damage here. And yeah, we want this floor cleared if possible. So heck it, let's steal Polyclaw this fool. After using Memento Mori. How can you live in this wretched place? Perfect. Now the middle floor is clear to probably kill outright, or almost, minus 1,682 is what we're able to do on the middle floor here. That's pretty good. Can we nail the finishing blow somehow? Can get really close. I think we can. For one, purge all your buffs. Get rid of all this garbage. Let that, that attack. There we go. Yeah, that's a kill. Beautiful. GG, Divinity. GG. Before the second mini-boss even appeared, we get the kill here, with all that rage stacking. GG. Bonk that man to death. GG. So now we have the reduced capacity on the middle floor, finally at Covenant 20. Got some of the harder to master cards done here. Vine Mother, Steel Polyclaw, the Enforcer. That was great. We unlock Adaptive Mutation, restore a friendly unit to full health, and then swap health and damage. Very breakable with uh, rage effects, that is. GG, everybody. Let's do another one. Got one more in me today, at least. Playing Random Random Covenant 20. So let's, uh, let's go again. Random Random, what do we get? Ah, my favorite combo, Wormkin Stygian, heck yeah. Oh, heck yeah. Spine Chief to start, too. Are stewards mastered yet? No. No, they are not. This is my favorite clan combo because I think it's one of the most breakable and abusable. You can go very spell-centric with these two clans, at least if your starting spells are vaguely friendly with it. I'd really like to get the Reap version of our champion here. But let's see what this is first. Third upgrade slot on units. Okay. No, I could work with that, actually. And our champ will be either gain charged echoes upon striking, or when charged echoes are gained on the Spine Chief's floor, all units gain reap, meaning they'll take damage over time. The Kayer is really good with spamming spells in particular, and is the one I was hoping for. But Infector can definitely do their own thing. That's quite effective. Let's take uh, the Takair. And we'll just go into the first combat with no shards here. like this. We'll play the spells, and then all the enemies get Reap. Reap deals damage equal to the number of charged echoes times the number of Reap stacks. 
at the end of each turn. Reap doesn't decay. Rather, the units move up onto the next floor, which may or may not have any charged echoes for the Reap to do anything with. So I can't actually score a kill on any of these with Revenge of the Damned, but I am allowed to kill my own train steward with this card, which will cause Reap to propagate onto everything. Check that out. Still counts as a slay. Beautiful. You're harmless. You're not. Dead. It's just as 50 damage outright. That's pretty good. Reap is going to be better than 6 damage, though. Let's just do the damage there. And again, the boss will continue to take damage equal to their Reap stacks times the number of charged echoes on the floor. be quite a lot, actually. GG. Infused Proclamation. This is a game breaker of a card. One of my favorites to find. Pay two charge echoes, which is actually only one, because you get to refund one with the infused that this card itself has to deal 50 damage to the front enemy unit. Heck yeah. And both of these are powerful spells as well. Crypt Builder and Ice Tornado. I also like Energy Siphon to just do bonus damage with one of our other spells. Let's take the Siphon here, actually, even though it's not infused. Hmm. Bog Chrysalis can be a nice companion to the Spine Chief. Actually, so can Titan Sentry. Apply Frostbite 3 to enemy units when damaged, so... Our goal is just to apply damage over time, reap and frostbite to any enemy that tries to pass us by on the bottom floor and then absolutely dunk their faces in. I love it. I love it. Let's go for Merchants of Magic. We want spell upgrades first and foremost. Although health upgrades on the shark are not unwelcome. Hmm. Well, might not be a Merchant of Steel run. Maybe we just go to this first one. Self-Infused Shark. More health and more Frostbite is pretty good. So we could go here, maybe? All right, let's go Merchant of Steel. This is probably the only merchant seal of the run. It's my guess. Offered multi strike, and I don't even have a good use for it. Although, what is this? Can host pupa with multi strike could be pretty cool. Applies reap to all enemy units. Their essences. Armor 2. Or armor 10 and reap 1 to all. Eh. This doesn't feel like it's going to be a unit heavy run for me. I'm going to skip both of these. We're just going to take 25 health. I know we had three unit upgrades, but still. Reroll for another shark upgrade? I will. More health. More health. Good talk. A 
be going mostly merchants of magic from here. Should be fun. So we'll always draw the Titan Sentry on turn one because of the uh, priority draw mechanic. As it's our only banner unit. Shouldn't have killed the back one, actually. Should have played the other thing as well. No matter, we win. Free reap to all, very good. Really like a card like Echo Snare. Founding Echoes to apply more infusions, also pretty welcome here. Grab an Echo Snare. Oh, here's Mollusk Mage, one of my favorites. Apply bonus magic power on the floor to make helical crystals and such so much better. Really good infusion for the shark, actually. Let's take it. One of my favorites. And we sense an overwhelming presence. We get to choose a divine artifact, a boon for the next combat. Super stewards. Four damage per spell. Four damage per spell sounds nice. Could also just take 25 gold, which is not bad at all. Actually, that's what I'm gonna take. I don't think I need any don't think I need any help with the Talos fight, so I'll simply take the money. If I don't need to dupe, that means we can go to the Merchant of Magic, right? That's right. We only need one shark. Holdover Proclamation could be definitely a thing. What's in the temple? 30 magic power? Minus two costs. Okay, we can make one of the helical crystals free. That seems like a good idea. Nothing here worth putting Intrinsic on. One shark for now. So one of the big reasons I did that is that Mollusk Mage is not a banner unit, which means there's no priority draw given to it. We're not guaranteed to get Mollusk Mage on turn one. But if we infuse the Mollusk Mage into the banner unit, the Titan Sentry, then we are guaranteed to draw it on turn one. So we always get down our tank with bonus spell power for free on turn one. That's great. Yeah, I'm going to hold over this proclamation. We're going to do it. No permafrost for me. Just discounted spell power upgraded stuff. Infuse Nexus Spike with the essence of two spells. Or purge a spell and create three one use copies. Can I do helical crystals, helical crystals? Because that sounds great, actually. Heck yeah. 
play helical crystals twice. Helical crystallis, rather. She didn't realize that was the name. So 25 damage to the front enemy four times is what that spell do. And that one can be separately upgraded from the rest. Cool. Poor boss is not going to know what to do. That's for sure. Go middle floor. Uh, no, I can't fit on the middle. Let's go top floor. Hmm. Actually, no, we'll put a ton of frostbite on the boss if I do it this way, so heck it. You first. Look at that. Eight reap and... 12 frostbite. Quadratic crystals. Yeah. Have some more reap. Well, I need to know the answer to this. The spell weakness one double the damage of both helical crystallis. Is this 50, 50, 25, 25, or is it 50 times four? Oh, right, does not affect bosses. It's zero. That's what it is. Never mind. You're not allowed to do that. It doesn't do anything. Apparently. Who knew? Who knew? Have some more frostbite. There's your damage. Try that again. Eat crystals, lady. Delicious. That's right. Nexus Spike does not affect bosses. It says it right on the card, actually. Does not affect bosses. But it's really easy to just ignore that text. It's a good use case for unearthed remains. Although I prefer my unearthed remains to be infused. Increasing the max number of echoes we can have on a floor makes Reap a lot more effective. Worm connections can also be pretty interesting, but let's take the Unearthed Remains. And we don't need any more units. We just need better spells. That's it. Skip. And we want more card draw to draw those spells. We also need lots of card removals to get rid of things that we don't want, like train stewards. Playing a spell does two damage, or our pyre gets the first hit on enemies. Two random damage is probably not that convenient, but who knows? Sure, let's take the token of a traitor. Ooh, okay, so we can either stay Decayer line, make it three reap per Inspire, or we can add gain an echo on strike. This will actually cause the Infector variant to activate their own Inspire keyword. Which I really like. You get less health this way. Um, but the cross synergy between Infector Decayer is really cool. 
especially when it comes to endless combat against bosses, because you'll stack the reap and the number of echoes. Really, really powerful. Really powerful. We do get another minus two cost. Easy. Actually, make this free. I think we'll be fine. To set up on bottom for this, as these units scale up in power as they climb floors. But actually, multi-strike means they'll take more frostbite from the Titan sentries, so maybe that's a good thing. How's it going, TMG? You're looking at Monster Train. One of my favorite deck building rogue ish games. Quite a delight every time. 25 damage twice, you say. Excellent. dead. You all dead, too. The power. The power. Alright, so let's actually get more echoes on the higher floors then, so that things climbing up with the reap status effect will get killed by them. Oh no! <laughs> I'm not allowed to target! Uh, fair enough. Punished by the token, that's funny. funny. Have some armor. Alright, and our boss. No problem here, right? I don't think so. Already almost winning, all we have to do is stack some reap and we're definitely winning. But note that both we and the boss are dying. Let's observe here. And what happens is that the boss ends up with a whole bunch of stacks of reap from the on hit echo generation of our champ. So once the boss finally does beat our units to death, the accumulated reap damage is enormous. 420, to be precise. Blaze it! We get Tethys' Scales. Chance to apply spell weakness when an enemy unit enters the train. That's great with a spell-centric build. AoE damage based on the number of charged echoes. Ancient Resonance is quite strong. Soul Cripple could also be very good here, allowing us to stack even more reap on one particular foe. Well, I'd like the ability to do some immediate damage. I'm taking this Resonance. Ooh, a Titan's, uh, an Ice Storm. Very nice spell power centric card. Preserve is a nice way to get some more charged echoes. Could let me retain the... Spell weakness, maybe. Don't need any of these. Although I know we haven't actually won with Preserve yet. Let's take it then. And we're definitely going to Merchant of Magic and two free removes over here on this side. Get rid of these remaining train stewards. Main thing we wanted the Merchant of Magic? Just cost reductions. There's always 
an ember stone available for 25 gold in the first slot of the shop. This one is never random. Only the power stone and keep stone are random. <laughs> Holdover ancient resonance. Now that could be something. Can I make it minus two cost? Not this floor. What is this though? When a card with consume is played, gain a charged echo. Oh yes. Fog Slime is one of the most breakable relics for the Wormkin clan. And uh, there's a lot of haunt nonsense we can do with that. Quite a lot. Do it this way. I want that other ember stone too. Just make things cheaper. Basically, wherever possible. The historian offers us a gift of gratitude. Heaven's gold or petty theft. I haven't won with Petty Theft yet. Kind of late in the run to get it, though. I think the one-time boost of money for the Gift of Gratitude seems fine. Spell Shield 2. That does give me some pause. We're fighting Stealth... Stealth Boss, not regular Stealth Units, though. Hmm... I think we can make it work. I might not be able to set up on the bottom, though. Let's see. Is Reap and Frostbite spell damage? No. No, they are not. What I'm going to do is set up on top here. Oh, the um, token of a traitor is going to help out a lot here, though. Get him! Good work. Yes! Excellent! The power. The power. <laughs> Who needs units, right? Me. I would like some units. Zoom gets another thing there. Oh, nice. It's fine. Strip all that. You should die. Great floor to use, Echo Snare on. Most of that won't make it. works up here.
Kerblam. All right, we can gain 80 bucks pretty easy. That seems tough to beat, quite frankly. So let's just use it. Stealth boss can be a real problem. This boss will not be targetable by attacks until nine turns have passed. It's a slight issue. She don't want this to be held over, do I? No, I don't. Do 100 damage that way, though. This is for more echoes. Hopefully, we can at least do something. Here's hoping. Minus 378. We can do better than that, though. GG. Acceptable. Dead to reap. GG. Total recall. Return three random spell cards from the discard pile to your hand and apply the consume keyword. Very, very good with bog slime. Likewise, return soul. Bring something out of the discard pile. Makes it cheaper and infused and consume. I'll take the total recall. Broken Memory is also quite potent, letting me get a specific consumed card back. Not that I have any I really care that much about. Second Infused Preserve. Could take Spike of the Stygian for more Frostbite. I don't think I need any of this, although maybe Frenzied Swarm is okay. Not today. Keep going, Merchants of Magic, even though I can't benefit from the heal 20? Yes, is my answer. Ah, there's Piercing. You, you're Piercing now. And another minus two cost. Sure. Please make this free. Now we want to remove cards we're not going to use very much. The Frozen Lances are first to go, ostensibly. Rather like the Fractures. I'd like to put spell uh, magic power on Nexus Spike. I am. Ooh. Might as well, then. Consume. Also remove consume from a card. Like Echo Snare, like Nexus Spike, or even Total Recall. On Earth Remains, not consuming, also kind of interesting. But since we benefit from consumes, I don't really know that I care to do that. Sure, all these fractures are nice and cheap. That's true. Frozen lances we can use to infuse floors that have no enemies on them. That's pretty good. What I like to dupe. Probably the proclamation. Seems fine. 
Second boss, not going to stand much of a chance at all here. No way. So, no playing units on this floor. I'll do what I want. It's end up dazed, which is a little annoying. Nothing we can't deal with. Spine Chief still dazed. is don't play spells. Okay, so I won't bother playing the Total Recall then. Yeah. Let's freeze the Total Recall. Should play that up top, actually. Units are forbidden. This is piercing, so it goes right through that uh, spell shield as well. Still, I'd like to use it on a turn where Arcus is on the floor, our uh, commander is on now. Unless it's a spell of... Yeah, can't play spells. Should have done it last turn. Fair enough. If we play any spells on this floor, all of our spells are going to get more expensive, which is really not something we want to do. So, I will oblige. Spells. I'll have to play the proclamation at least, though. No units. Easy to do. Five hundred reap damage, six hundred and forty eight reap damage, seven hundred. Bang. 
Bang, 992. After the boss kills our champ, GG. Hmm. Deal damage to the front enemy unit equal to twice the number of spells in your deck, three times. 42 damage times three is pretty good. Return five consumed spells to the top of the draw pile. Could also do some delights for us. Don't have much use for accelerated incubation, though. I'll take an ancient synergy. Haven't crossed that card off the list yet. And I think we want even more card draw. We're going to be able to get further energy discounts, so let's just keep drawing more cards. Aha, Carving Koriska. When a card with Extract is played, gain one energy and one charged echo. That's a winner, especially with duplicated holdover infused proclamation it now costs zero charged echoes well costs two and then refunds two so it's even better because it activates inspire twice heck yeah And we can either go multi-strike so that the Infector version attacks twice per round or make it again in Reap 3 per. Let's make it multi-strike. Attack twice per combat round, gain two charged echoes per combat round. Koriska is pretty broken. Koriska plus Bog Slime is extra broken. Like super duper broken. It's okay. Total Recall. <laughs> and they all died. Which reap can the boss get in one turn? Let's find out together. The number is changing a lot. Low power. GG. Thousand reap damage. Not too bad. Ooh. Extract cards. This one it extracts and applies consume to drawn spells. This is draw card in particular, very powerful. Might go for that. Give me that. It's got the infusion on it. 
And we can use Silence to shut down Seraph the Patient here, who gains strength with uh, every spell we play. Yeah, it's actually funny, if you look at some of the, the worst cards and most useless strategies in Monster Train, currently they correspond with things that used to be dominating for the player base when they were first introduced. So things got hit with the nerf stick so hard that they inverted what was OP and what was weak. Better game at the, at the end? I'm not sure, but I like where we've landed either way. Numerous fun options. Hmm. More capacity on each floor is pretty good. Mine hoard. Don't want either of these. Sketches is no good. Totem Fragment's pretty good, though. It applies Spell Weakness 2 to anything that reaches the top floor. That I like quite a bit. Make the Ancient Synergy consume? Should just make it cheap, mainly. You can consume. One, actually two card purges in addition to the Unstable Vortex and the Duke. I don't want to destroy too many of my own cards. I could definitely do that by accident. Let's just take a third proclamation then. With Holdover. Very good card, very cheap dupe price too, only five shards. Get rid of one of these shelters. And the unmodified fracture. I could buy two more removes if I wanted to, but what the heck would I remove at this point? Can't remove dead weights. Everything else has a purpose. All right, that's fine. Seraph attacks every turn, applying melee weakness to your front unit and gains strength on rally and encant. That's what we can stop with the... Um, silence is the rally and cant of Seraph. Go ham on turn one here. You will be back after all. Hmm. Sure, why not? I have more or less nothing to lose.
Got him. Okay, putting uh, consume on whatever this is. Perfect. these charged echoes reap damage is allegedly 1292 dang that's a lot of reap yeah and here you were worried about the front unit dying to seraph no chance no chance Now, the last divinity is going to be tricky, because the last divinity will purge reap periodically. Also, the damage output of the last divinity enemies are pretty high. We might want not to be on the bottom here, rather deploying on a higher floor. How do I feel about the top sweep floor? It's fine. Yeah, and any units that get to the top floor will have bonus spell weakness. I like this. We'll have to use armor to keep our units alive, but overall they have enough health that this should be mostly fine. We just have to make sure that the divinity dies within the turns allotted to us. the way for just hurting the last divinity then. Perfect. And just in time, here's Ancient Resonance. Perfect. So now the proclamations can start to deal big damage to the boss every turn. 450 damage per turn. Easy, it looks like. Plus a lot of reap created from that, too. It's pretty good. turn. Oh, 
Yeah, multiple, multiple holdover zero cost proclamations does indeed feel pretty sweet. Although we have to use some of them to defeat hot nonsense. I'm actually not convinced we're going to make it here. To be truthful, I don't have dazed. Maybe needed that dazed. That's right, we should actually just focus on letting enemies get the top so that we can take better advantage of the totem fragment, huh? Feels right. Some pretty good reap damage this turn. Nine hundred and sixty. Definitely have to use the AOE down here. Clean six hundred to that guy. Another four fifty to the divinity. I think we're there. Based on how this is going. Simply beautiful. The spells get there. Not bad at all. GG Twitch chat. Covenant 21 crossed off the list. Really highlighting the power of just spamming spells there. You're able to clear every single wave just by wiping out all the enemies. Pretty effective. Hell yeah. Get a few of our cards maxed out too. Excellent. Excellent Twitch chat. GG. GG. Well, Twitch chat. I think that is going to bring me to the end of another wonderful stream with you all. Sending off a bit early here to go get uh, dinner started. Spaghetti is tonight's meal. I'm going to give a quick plug to the HelloFresh sponsorship. Did you know you can support the stream and get fresh, delicious meal ingredients delivered straight to your front door if you're in the U.S. by checking out this link here in chat. 
So far, quite a few people have already used the code, and I super appreciate each and every one of you. We will be seeing our uh, our box arrive next week on stream and opening it up, checking out the contents. But that's all I've got to say for tonight, Twitch chat. It is going to be a cozy night, I hope, for all y'all. We'll be back tomorrow with some more Spire working towards our Mastery Challenge. And I'm planning on doing some more Slice and Dice as well. Maybe doing some more runs of Unfair Difficulty. That's, uh, that's the plan for the next day or two anyway. Till then, Twitch chat, please stay cozy, be kind to one another, and have a good one. Till then, everybody, toodaloo, and good night.